everybody's looking right. Everything's looking perfect. By Lissimo. Welcome back, guys. You are watching Trade Skills, the show where we uh, interview people first and then drink beer second. So interviewing is kind of like the first thing that we like to do or the, the most important thing. And when we can't do that, we drink beer. So we drink beer, review beer, talk about beer, lust for beer, all things beer. This is Ryan. I'm sure you've seen him before. This is his third episode, right? Third. Yeah. Third episode. Third episode. I think that's about the same as Leah. She didn't get very, she didn't get very long. <laughs> Shout out to Leah. She Shout didn't get to very, Leah. She didn't get very far. <laughs> I just noticed I don't have anything pulled up, like to be able to see comments or anything like that. Honestly. Yeah, you might need that. I might. All right, that one looks beautiful. And, uh, no, too far, too close. Bellissimo. All right, guys. Sorry for the, sorry for the wait. We're working it out. We're That's right. It. Send your resumes in. We're getting it worked out. Um, but yeah, so we've got a couple good beers on today. Well, we've got four good beers. And maybe four, two not so great beers. We don't know yet. Maybe they're all six great beers. We don't know. But um, <laughs> we're in Pretoria. Uh, I like to do, I like this location. It's a beautiful location, and, and I'm glad they're kind enough to let me use this. And we have two new Pretoria beers right here, uh, and we'll get into those. We'll review them. Um, we've got the Juice Box Hero, which is a hazy, it's a super juicy hazy IPA. We're going to be reviewing that one, and we got the, it's a coffee stout, it's a campfire coffee stout. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking they use Cafe Campesino coffee beans, which is uh, like somewhat local, so always a shout out to the local people. Uh, we got two, three taverns beers, we got Transcendo. Transcendo, and it's an IPA with Citra Mosaic and Laurel. Yeah, Laurel. We have Three Day IPA, and it is a, a Session Ale with Amarillo Mosaic, so it's still an IPA, basically. It's a light IPA. We got Sunset Passion from New Realm. So at first I didn't really like New Realm, but they slowly become something I actually like. It's a uh, it's a wheat beer. It's a passion fruit and tangerine. And then we got good old fashioned dogfish head. This is their costumes and karaoke. And it is it is an imperial cream ale with turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, and star. What's that? A N I S E. Yeah. Nice. Anise. Nice. Yeah. Either way, it's a very interesting looking beer. Um, it's a cream ale, like I said, and. It's an imperial, so uh, it's probably a little higher on the ABV. That's not bad. It's eight. All right, so we'll go ahead and grab into those. Um, if you guys have any questions, if you want to know anything, the phone number is right down there, so you can call up. You can talk some shit with us. You can ask about beer. Um, later on in the episode, uh, I do have some news for future episodes, future events, guests, so on and so forth. Um, I've got like the next maybe couple of weeks planned out, so that should be cool. And yeah, we'll go ahead and grab into the beer. Sweet. So I'm gonna run with the hazy first. This is the Juice Box Hero from Pretoria. I wonder if the cat's still in the background. I don't see it. Probably have been fed. Whew. I'm online right now, I can't respond. Sorry. Brendan needs those resumes. He needs his tech person. Stop. 
don't listen. Is this set up right? Yeah. Sorry, guys. So many windows. So many windows. Trying to keep track. <laughs> All right, have you tried it yet? Not yet. All right. Taco, what's up? Taco 83. It's a hazy. Yeah, that's super hazy. And if you look at it, so, so somebody once said that this looks like bacon grease. They said, is that bacon grease in a glass? I can kind of see it. But as far as flavor-wise, it's definitely not. The smell is great. It's uh, It's got a really good, really good flavor. Like... It's a little late in the season to have a hazy, but some people like IPAs all year. We're working up on stout season, and, and Georgia is a little later, um, a little later to all that because we get cold weather, cold weather, a little later than everybody else. So it doesn't probably, probably won't start getting cold here until December or maybe yeah. January. Towards the end of December. Yeah, so we'll see. So right now, stuff like this, even though most breweries are probably aren't putting out stuff like this, or they're not pushing as much of this and they're running into they just did their october fest so they're going to start doing ambers and stouts and browns reds um usually ipas are not at the front of the list but pretoria like i said georgia they're running it a little bit different so so far so good yeah, it's pretty good i enjoy it so i think this is the second hazy from curtis he made one like right during covid which is really good and yeah, it's the second time. It tastes a little bit different. It's a lot hazier. And this one's at a 7.8%. It's a nice and strong. Taco, taco 83. Wish I had some tacos. And I was born in 83. So I feel that. Tacos would be pretty dope. Yeah. I just might do that. I might get off here <laughs> and not get tacos. I might get cookout. I can still eat keto at cookout. Cheeseburger, little $5. I get the uh, big double burger tray. I just take the bun off, so it's got like two burger patties. I get bacon and cheese and all the veggies. Gobble that up and then get two of the, uh, what are they called? The ranch wraps, bacon yeah. ranch wraps. And I just get it without the uh, the ranch. And I just pull the bacon. Basically, I'm just pulling out bacon and cheese out of it. Getting a little bacon and cheese yeah. action. I have that. You have the expression on everybody. Yeah, everybody likes tacos. There's a guy I play with named Taco on uh, on Monster Hunter. I probably should stream Monster Hunter, but I'm not that good at it. Well, they could appreciate how not great you are. Yeah, no, I know, but I've been playing it forever. Um, I've been playing it since 2004 or 2005 when it came out on the PlayStation 2. And pretty much every time they put out one of them, I pretty much jumped on it. Okay. I bought consoles just to get Monster Hunters. Like, I really wasn't interested in the Wii, and they're like, we're putting out Monster Hunter third. And I'm like, I'll, I'll take a Wii. I'll take a Wii. And then, and then the Wii U came out, and I was like, I don't really care about this. This is the Wii U, or this is the Wii with a, with a, a tablet. And they're like, we're putting out Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. I was like, done. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> done. I got a Switch to get Monster Hunter. I got a PSP to get Monster Hunter. A Vita. Dedicated to the to the craft. <laughs> I just really like it a lot. I always play hammer. Big bonks, being a big old hammer and smack things in the head with it. <laughs> hammer needs to visit Pretoria. Mm -hmm. Start bonking folks in the head. That can't be helped, man. <laughs> Here, I'm gonna go grab my bait. But no, that's a good ass IPA. Yeah, it's definitely uh, super hazy, like you said, man. It uh, it, it tastes great taste. Um, we can also try at least a sip of the. And I feel kind of bad not talking about it.
that's a lot of head. All right, so after we get done with that one, we got the uh, Be Happy Brown L. It's basically an upgraded version of the Brown Thrasher. Okay. And what's cool about that one is that uh, part of the proceeds or the sales of the beer goes towards our Albany Art Museum, which is really cool. By the way, how are you guys tonight? Ready for some Thanksgiving? Yes, I am ready for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. I've been, I've been doing keto lately, right? Because I gained some weight during COVID. And uh, it's all thrown out the window for Thanksgiving. Just one day I can eat whatever I want. And I did that last week. I, I have probably once or twice a month. I'll just have total splurge days when I intake just crazy amount of carbs and I don't care. So last week, last Wednesday, um, me and my friend Alicia went to Columbus just to go to an Indian restaurant. We were eating naan and the papadam and all the rice and yeah, that, that blew it out. Dude, destroyed it. It's worth it. So I, I don't mind. So Thanksgiving taco, I'm, I'm assuming you are from the States, right? Or you know we're from the states and you're from out of the states and you're asking because we get hyped for Thanksgiving. It's the best holiday of the year now. It's it's a reason for people to eat until they're like in a catatonic state, which that's that's tradition. You actually might be judged if you don't. Know I was that. here last week. So worth it. You're right, Alicia. So worth it. Indian food. <laughs> we can do a trip next week. <laughs> no. Um. So soon. Uh, I I mentioned I was gonna. Uh, I'll talk about the news later. It's not, it's not mind-blowing. It's not anything crazy. It's just stuff about future episodes, something a bit nostalgic. I think most of you guys have been watching the show for a while will enjoy. Pittsburgh, right on. Uh, yeah, Pittsburgh's... I haven't seen a lot of Pittsburgh. I've seen just Philly. Me and Alicia, actually, went to Philly probably, what, two months ago or something like that? The tickets were just too cheap to pass up. I think we flew for $25 round trip. Good Lord. So we flew into Philly, and we, we ate, you know, we are being the tourists, and we ate the Philly steaks, and then we went to the, I think it's called the Muta Museum. It's like a medical museum, so you see all the medical anomalies. It's kind of like dark, dark um, tourism. Oh, really? So you see, like, uh, abnormalities and and people being deformed like you see their their body like you see skulls you see you know bones of people with tuberculosis and all kinds of crazy stuff and then we went to other museums uh me and alicia are really big into history and she likes etruscan a lot and they had a pretty big etruscan exhibit there at one of the one of the museums we went to and then yeah we just drank a lot of beer and ate a lot of food had a good old time i can't believe you don't remember me from your last dream i do remember you taco I remember Taco 83, but I don't remember, so I remember the name, but I don't remember like that you came from, that you're from Pittsburgh. I Sorry, don't. Taco 83. Sorry, Taco. You'll always have a place in my heart, especially with the name Taco, which I love tacos, and 83, because I was born in 83. So, shout out to Taco 83. Way to go, Taco. Taco, did you come in when we, uh, when me and Ryan, you were on the last episode, yeah? We were at yeah. the... Um, Manor House. Manor House. Yeah. Dude, I, I went somewhere today for a location, like testing the internet. Yeah. So Manor House, we were rocking between one to three megabytes upload, which is trash. I wish I could get better <laughs> speeds there. When I went to this other location, dude, they were there at like 144 pretty regularly upload and their download was stupid i'm guessing they had i don't know what kind of service they had what's up matt it's okay i was born in 83 i'm uh, december so i'm barely 83 you got me beat by a little bit mac what's up i gotta get mac on here too man i i don't know man I, since i don't have since it's just me right doing the show and i have this show i do i i do a show for somebody on uh, Tuesdays, I do Alicia's uh, Stella Fortuna's tarot card reading show. Um, I was doing bingo on Wednesdays. I was doing the radio on Thursdays, and then I usually work all weekend. Then I just completely, 
I, I need a producer. <laughs> I need a producer to kind of to be like, hey, I, I talked with this person, or hey, what do you think about this person? Or it was a little easier when, when Jake was here because I can meet him for coffee and be like, we, we would have like a whole spiel of like coming up with who we think would be great for the show. And then when we contact people, we'll see who they think might be. Because a lot of times when you're, uh, when you're a specialist or you're really skilled at something, chances are you are friends with somebody else who's really skilled as well. Right. So we can do a Monday. Yeah, I'm down, man. I'm down. So I have stuff coming on the next three, probably Mondays. And those are, that's what I was going to mention about the news. I was going to bring some news up about it the next probably three episodes. So it would probably end up being somewhere in December, if you're cool with that. You kind of see my, see my set up. We can bring, um, we could probably bring the little fly water machine you have to show how the flies work in the water. And then I wonder how I could use that with beer. I mean, I wouldn't put beer in there, of course, because <laughs> the way the bubbles work, it would just create so much head that it would mess. And then, you know, you probably don't want beer running through your pumps. But um, maybe a beer in front of it or beer behind it or we'll work something out, man. I have, a, I have probably like four or five people that I, I need to contact about doing future episodes. The week just gets, gets away from me, man. It's, it's, it's sad, honestly. Um, I will be, as you guys know, if you've been watching the show, I will be moving up to Nashville within the next six to eight months. So me and Jake will continue the show uh, in Nashville, so that'll be pretty cool. I'll be excited about that. And there'll be a lot of interesting people. I think, I, since I don't have a lot of friends up there, the networking might take a bit to try to get somebody to come on the show. And if anything, it'd just be me and Jake talking shit for a bit until we can get people on old times yeah it'd be quite nostalgic just not the seventh we'll work something out man i'm sure the seventh has got something going on but um so yeah jake builds guitars for all these famous people so it's a chance you know and he, he hangs out with them sometimes you know they might be at a bar or, or he they might invite him out to their house they've done that a couple times so maybe they get in cool enough and I can do an interview with a famous person. That'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty I mean, I'm not too. like, I'm not like banking on it. If it happens, it happens. That's cool. But if you didn't hear it before taco, I'm December 83. So barely into the 83. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pound down the last of this hazy. This is the Be Happy Brown Ale. And like I said, um, part of the proceeds from this go to the uh, Albany Museum of Art. And just this weekend, they had a chalk fest outside so that all that money kind of helped raise. You, you, wanna, you want money to go towards your, your local art scene. And that's, that's kind of a good way to do it. You know, why not do a collaboration between a brewery and a... I mean, this was part of an art park at one point, so... That's part of where we're from. Either way, it's called Be Happy Brown Ale, and it's basically our brown thrasher, but it's modified, so it's much toastier, roastier, and nuttier. Uh, I love it. I think it's much better than the original. Oh, that smells great. It does have a good smell. It's much better than the original. Yeah, for sure. Get a bunch of uh, bar owners up there to come on the show and talk about their bar. Only thing with, I mean, I could do an ep like multiple episodes with different bar owners in town. Only thing is, is like I wasn't sure if Twitch viewers, so most Twitch viewers or anybody who's going to watch the show, are going to be not from here, not local. So, what interest would they have in? seeing some small town in Georgia like what their local bar scene is doing you know why not oh when they just go and watch somebody play Fortnite or something like that so yeah you're right juice box hero is that jam but uh yeah so 
I try to find something that everybody would be a little bit interested in or some kind of common ground. So I don't want it to be all about one local area or something that's just local to here. So anybody that's watching in Pittsburgh might not have an interest in it. So beer is everywhere. Everybody, I mean, most of these beers, so Three Taverns is Georgia beer. This is a Georgia beer. Dogfish Head, that's everywhere. You can get that everywhere. And Pretoria beer, soon it will be all over. It's all over Georgia right now. And uh, if you're in Pittsburgh and you want to try some Pretoria beer, I'm sure I can find some way to work it out. Yeah, I'm sure I'm, I can find some way to work it out. We can do like a, a beer swap system, you know? You find some really funky dankers, you know, you're 83, so you're 37 now, I'm assuming, unless your birthday is in November. Um, so I'm sure you like beer, right? Maybe. You know something about beer? Have friends that do. Yes, or have somebody, who, yeah, you can just find some dankers from, from that area. You know, don't get me the really well-known ones. I don't need yingling and stuff. Local. Yeah, and then we can work something out. I'll, I'll, I was talking about in Nashville, the center of country music. Yeah, no, I could definitely do that. The only thing is, though, is like, I live in a small town now, and that's fine. You know, people are more willing to talk to you in small towns because, you know, chances are they ain't got a lot of shit going on anyways. But in Nashville... Uh, I feel like everybody's just kind of got some big thing going on. Like, why would they want to hear from some small little company? Or it's not even a company because I don't make money from this. I do this just because I enjoy it. Why would they want to hear from me? But you never know. Me and Joe Montana share the same birthday, June 11th. Well, uh, Taco, happy birthday as of June 11th. Happy, happy belated birthday. Happy belated. 37th. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the Be Happy Brown Ale. Like I said, uh, part of the proceeds of this go to the Albany Museum of Art. Always a good cause. Um, I, I suppose since I'm talking about news, I might as well bring up at least a little bit of the news. I'm not going to mention some of the other people. I'll mention those later, some of the people I'm going to interview. But, uh, excuse me. So I met with the Throne of Tisca today. I met with Todd. Yeah, yeah. And Todd's awesome. And uh, we went around and we tested all the different locations to check the speeds. And even outside. So the Throne of Tisca is part of the train depot, all that kind of area right there. And if you're unfamiliar with the area, then it's just kind of old Albany. So everything from, it's, it's like a museum, a educational area. There's an old train out there, super old train. So... There's a planetarium. I'm going to do one of the episodes from the planetarium. Really? Inside of the planetarium. That with it sweet. all lit up. So the stars and stuff. I don't know how I'm going to work the lighting so people can still see me. And still see whoever I have on the show. Um, but I think that would be pretty cool. And it's dark as shit in there. It kind of has to be. But I think that would be cool. And then also, out back, I can still get Wi-Fi on the train. Like, maybe not in the train, but I was on top of the train and got Wi-Fi. So, having an episode on a train. Or in. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good episode. That'd be the coolest episode I've seen so far. I don't know if I can have a Wi-Fi booster. I mean, I would have to have their information to, to do the Wi-Fi booster. Or, if I didn't want to push it out to Facebook Live and Twitch at the same time, I could just bring my my camera, yeah, and connect up to it, and just do it straight into Twitch. That could work. Hmm. Yeah. But hopefully you have a way to get their information so you can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. No, I've got, I've got the, uh, the save files and all that kind of stuff. Or not the save files, but I've got the, uh, the Wi-Fi passwords, and I can connect to it. The speeds are stupid fast. But the train is probably a good, you know, 50 feet away from the building. So yeah. the speeds went from me having a, like 144 megabytes per second to like 10. Which 10 is still workable. Right. But I don't know how it's going to work when I get inside the train. And then I don't know how the camera angles are going to work or where to even set up equipment. And the train's about 50 feet away. So getting like power cables to extend that far. 
Yeah, there's a lot to play into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would probably. So normally I set up. Uh, I get here at eight or eight thirty. Gives me about an hour and a half to set up, get beers together, and all that. Do the the post, the original post, and Facebook and Instagram and all that. I would probably get there at like four or five, just to kind of test it all, make sure it's coming through okay. Because even though it says 10 megabytes a second, it still was kind of laggy pulling it on. So I don't know if it was like, you know, 10, then 2, then 10, then 2. I don't know. So I have to try it out. Either way, I'm going to pound down this beer. Um, I feel like we're going to, if we don't eat some combos, man, I feel like I'm going to get pretty toasty tonight. Yeah, I already feel it. Yeah, I mean, because the, the beer that we were drinking, so the Juice Box Hero is 7.8%. Um, and I think that is my, I haven't had one of those tonight, but I have had one of the, the coffee stouts, the campfire coffee stouts and that's 6.5%. So bring on the combos. Yeah. So <laughs> m and Mars, they, they donated and shout out to m and Mars. They're not going to see this, but shout out to m and Mars during the COVID crisis, like the peak of it, we at Pretoria made tons of sanitizer and we gave them a bunch to kind of help them do what they do, and they gave us a crap ton of combos for free. So that's what we survived off of for, you know, two months. Back there making sanitizer, and in between, you know, with sanitizer-covered hands, we're just popping some combos and getting back to work. It's good times. It's good times. Simpler times. Easy times. <laughs> no, it was tough. It, 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 was, it was shit, honestly. Like, I knew it needed to be done. I knew that people needed sanitizer. There was nowhere locally that you could get it. It was just out everywhere. And yeah. we were pounding it out. But we, the thing is with the sanitizer is that we, we're, we're back there making it. And it's ethanol and it's um, Bitrex, which keeps people from drinking it. It's purified water and varied levels of hydrogen peroxide. But like breathing this stuff in is extremely harmful in long, like long stints. You know, we're just sitting over here with hoses just pouring it into just hundreds and hundreds of gallons. Agitating of, the, the smell and everything. Yeah, like you're not supposed to bring that, breathe that stuff in, but because of the COVID crisis, the masks were just non-existent. People were buying them up and selling them for, for crazy prices. This is during like the peak. So we just couldn't get them. Respirators, these kind of things where we can kind of keep it from getting out. Like we Forget about get, it. Forget about it. We couldn't <laughs> get any of it. Anyways, I'm going to pound down the last of that. All right. So I think it'll slow down in a second as far as the beer and the, uh, the toxicity goes. Because I poured a full, like, 10 ounce of this, which is not a lot. But these, I mean, these are only, what, 16 ounces? 12, 12 ounces. These are 12 ounces. So I really will only be able to fill probably half of this. So from, from now on, I'll, everything will be just a half glass. Ooh. Very coffee. Yeah. That's Very like, coffee. Well. So even though it's got so much of a coffee taste and smell, it's not overbearing. So if you're, if you're a coffee lover, if you like black coffee, if you like, I mean, honestly, you could probably put you could probably put creamer in this, real talk. I just thought, I was like, can you put creamer in you this? You could probably put creamer in this. And it would probably taste really good. Mix a coffee stout and a milk stout together. Done. We got like an iced coffee or iced latte stout or something like just that. Just serve it nice and cold. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting a lot more like overbearing coffee flavor and it, it didn't come through like it was actually I'm getting lots of coffee man it just tastes like a just a really black cup of coffee yeah I'm gonna need to bump up the ISO a bit we look kind of dark That looks better. Not too bright? I don't think so. Mm. 
Lit. Bring on the combos. You want some combos, Taco? We get a couple packs. <laughs> we'll send some to you. I don't know how well they'll they'll make it, but we'll send some to you. Combos is how we make it through life. Thank you, sir. We had the nice pizzeria one, which Food that fans. was them boys. And, and Eminem Mars did a great job. Um, they sent us Snickers too, boxes of Snickers. Those went pretty quick, but as far as I know, the management probably has you know two boxes in the freezer, but store upstairs. Mm-hmm. But either way, like I said, if you guys have questions, whatever, you want to talk some shit, phone number's right here. This is a phone that's dedicated to the show, so you can call up, you can talk shit. You'll be on live. So, I don't know if I'm going to finish all of the camp Cafe Campesino uh, stout, the campfire. It is really good, and I'm a huge stout fan, but I feel like if I drink through all of this, this will be my second one of these. If I drink through all of this and then tear through all of these beers, I'm going to be uh, blitzed on this episode. <laughs> so, I, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm kind of a lightweight. Honestly, even though I have a show where I interview people and drink beer, I drink beer pretty much once a week, and it's on Mondays. And I kind of messed up today because all I've had is six eggs all day. I just cooked up six eggs into a big, like, kind of omelet thing, and that's all I had. And that was probably that was much earlier today. So I have new. Uh, so I have some new since news since the last time we talked. News. What's up with the news? Bring us that news, Taco. Call the number. Tell it live. Yeah. Tell us the news live. Or just talk some shit, you know? Talk trash. Delete combos and... Listen to the trash. Engage in banter. Yeah. Decided to run for Senate. All right. Trying to make a change. Do you have... Um, are you... I'm guessing you're already into politics, correct? I'm guessing that's something you're already super interested in. Um, do you hold any kind of political stance right now or not or do you hold any kind of position right now political position are you like even in a are you in a law office or do you local government local government you have some connections what office do you hold like having some like momentum or I mean you're 37 years old so it's not like I'm talking to a kid you already know what you're doing and if you're wherever you're at you know you said Pittsburgh around Pittsburgh. So if you're in like a small town around Pittsburgh or something like that, I mean, if you have like local politicians that are trash, you know, kick them out, make some big changes. Be the change you want. I really should, I should turn off my uh, ringer. <laughs> yeah, only thing is, is um, I want to be able to hear if somebody calls up. That'll work out, we'll do that probably feel it yes very uh i don't i'm sorry i i have a lot of good ideas that would make a change especially the veterans are you a veteran you seem to have a heart for veterans and i feel like they're treated very poorly i mean there's just a ridiculous amount of homeless veterans out there that are just not getting any kind of love or just a shame you know as you know probably 30 40 years ago they were gung-ho for america and fighting for their country and then you know, now they're begging for for pennies and stuff. No, my mom was, she died in the first Gulf War. Damn. Sorry to hear that. So, yeah, do you definitely have a, a stance? And, you, you know, if you could do something for the, the local government, that would be, that'd be pretty awesome. That's interesting. We, we've never actually talked about any of this kind of stuff on the show. So that would be a very interesting take. Sorry, I was kind of adjusting some stuff. All right. 
Yeah, so I'm going to tear through this. Cafe Campesino. I feel like I'm getting all the coffee I need for the day. And since it uses actual coffee from Cafe Campesino, which is it's called the Campfire Coffee Stout, I'm sure there's some actual caffeine in there. I'm sure it didn't actually get brewed out. Yeah, I'm sure it had to retain some. Yeah. So if you ever had the, oh, you did try it. You tried it, uh, was it last week or the week before? The um, PBR. Last week. That shit's good, man. It was really good. Like, it, it's super sweet, though. I just hate seeing veterans push to the side when they come back. Yeah, no doubt. That's a shitty situation. And you're so, so adamant for your country and you do... Uh, so much and then you come back and you don't get any love and they're like I mean as lame as it sounds um, it reminds well as lame as this reference is it reminds me of was it Fallout 1 there's a game called there's a game called Fallout and the original PC game Fallout 1 is that they're it's like post apocalyptic in the vault that you live in that you've kind of been born and raised in it's underground vault and everybody, you know, it's a whole community. They're like, hey, our water purification system is going out and we need somebody to go out there and go to a different vault and take their water purification system. The vault's gone. There's nobody living in it and they're not using it. So take it and bring it back. And you go through this whole game, living in the wastelands and doing this crazy stuff all so you can take this water purification system to your vault to like help them live and once you bring it back at the end of the game spoilers they're like yeah thank you you did a great job but you're not one of us anymore like you can't live here like you've been weathered by the wasteland and you are not we don't want you in here anymore so thank you for what you've done and you have an option to leave or like blow his brains out <laughs> good god Short bus, T-A-C-P. Is Dan going to be there tonight? Not that I know of. Dan hasn't said anything about it. And if Dan wants to come, Dan is more than welcome to come. But Dan hasn't said anything to me about it. Short bus, T-A-C-P. Who's that from? I don't know. Short bus, T-A-C-P. Not a clue. Updating some stuff real quick. Back out of that. Bring that up. Bring that up. Sorry, I'm doing some some Twitch modifications. Yeah, so short bus, I didn't see your message. I updated and then it took your message away. So remind me again who you are. If you know Dan though, I probably know you. I just don't recognize the name short bus T T A C P. I would like to request a name explanation on that one. Well I know T C P is the cool place. Um, there's TCP 2.0 or something like that. The cool place, the new cool place. A shout out to Halim doing a great job over there. He's really trying to push out some beer, push out some video games, push out some events. Super driven guy. But yeah, so short bus, I didn't see your message. I updated my Twitch because it was being funky. I grew up with Dan and Evan. I'm waiting to catch him online with you guys to mess with him. Oh, okay. I don't know if I know Ann or Evan, but I know Dan. You're talking about Dan Erdman? 
Dan, the only person I know that knows Dan, besides people who are around here, is um, DV. So Dan and DV, I'm, I'm assuming you mean that Dan. Cool guy. He actually hasn't been on the show in a while. I don't know what he's been up to. I should get him back on just to hang with me. Yeah, I figured if you know Dan, you know DV. They're both living in Albany, and they come to Pretoria pretty regularly to get beer. They like this uh, stout berry mix that I make. I make our, mix our Walker Station stout with the berry goza. It makes like a chocolate covered cherry thing, and they're both all it'll, about it. It'll change your life for the better. Some people like it, some people don't. And uh, a lot of people who are like, yeah, I don't dig stouts, or I don't dig sours. I let them try it, and they're like, okay. I fuck with that. I like it. We're done with that one, right? Yeah. So we're going to go into our actual canned beers. So that concludes our Pretoria beer for the night, and we're going to add that into our rating system. So not not this upcoming Sunday, but the next Sunday. That'll be the next uh, stout and uh, coffee yeah. and s'more thing that they do every other week here, right? Yeah, so it'll be um, a new – so Pretoria has – I think it's every other Sunday they've got a new stout. And I brought tons of black garlic, so they're going to be making that black garlic stout. Or they might do an amber. I'm not sure what they're going to do. Tactical air control party. Don't tell Dan that's what it stands for. He'll know who I am instantly. Fair enough. So uh, what I'll do is... So I'm guessing, Short Bus, you've come on our previous episode, or maybe I've actually met you. I'm not sure. One of those two, because you either came on an episode with Dan, or where you, you're from this area and I already know you. What's up, Joey? You know Joey. What's up, ma'am? Joey. I still need to get Joey on the show. I hope you're enjoying my Wednesday's bingo. Um, I'm kind of bummed I'm not getting that. says, I've watched a few streams, but we've never said anything. Or I've never said anything. I don't think we've ever met. If you're from this area, uh, then I think that would be cool to meet. And uh, you definitely can come on the show with me and Dan. But first, when I bring Dan on the show, you can definitely talk some shit. From Moultrie. Moultrie's not too far away. No, 40, 50 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have uh, you, Dan and DV on an episode. It'll be us four. I'll bring out two microphones and we will sit around drinking beer. Loving it. They missed me. They didn't miss you. <laughs> I'll call in one of these. No, man, come in. Oh, Taco. Yeah, call in for sure. But yeah, uh, Short Bus, I think it'd be a great episode with the three boys, you know, you, DV, and Dan. And then me, and then us trying a bunch of beer, and maybe you guys could give me some funny stories, or I'm sure you guys have some some funny, crazy stories that you guys could throw out. I live in Kansas, active military. My job's uh, e enough about Dan. I'm drinking Shinerbach currently. Yeah, nice. You guys make anything like that? We haven't made any box. We've made some... We made some Belgian triples. We made some Belgian doubles. We've made um, tons of like saisons and wheat beers and stouts, porters. We've made well over a hundred something beers. So it's a Belgian uh, double or double, as they say. I think it's pronounced double, and yeah. it's that's our. Um, was it called? Swamp? We called it swamp gravy. We live in the south, so swamps are a, a real thing around this area. So <laughs> most of our names are somewhat of a local name. You know, we got Rye Charles, which is a Rye IPA named after Ray Charles, who was from this area. We've got Walker Station Stout, which is, I mean, Walker Station is, you know, I'm not going to say right down the road, but it's definitely local. Flowing Wells, name of a road, is local. Skywater is the name of uh, another name for the Radium Springs, like a Native American term for it. 
there's the Sholi, which is named after the Shoal Bass, which is local to this area. Slappy. Slappy is named after Slappy. Yeah, and that's the uh, Session Mosaic IPA. Sweet Tea Lager, because we're in the south. Let's see, Red Farm Feather. House. Farmhouse Berry Goza. Yeah, Farmhouse Berry Goza. So if you're not familiar with the brewery, um, most of the ingredients that actually come from the, that, that go into the beer come from the farm. So Pretoria Field is not only a brewery, but it's also a farm. It's, or it's a collective. It's multiple different things. It's also a radio station. It's Queen Bee Radio on Q102.1. So it's, it's a collective. It's a bunch of different stuff. So they try to keep everything local. Um, I think it's, it's awesome. Sorry, I missed a couple messages. Crazy firefighter stories. Yeah, that would be awesome too. Joey, you're lying. They didn't miss you. They were talking so much shit while you were gone. They're like, geez, thank God you're here. So, Joey, um, you can add it into your episode or into your show, to your bingo, but I do a thing called a good old-fashioned three-way, and it's usually towards the end. Everybody seems to enjoy it. So I'll either do a blackout bingo or I'll do a good old-fashioned three-way. And for bingo, that's basically if they have a big group of people, it's just give me three bingos at your table, whether you got two bingos on your card and one bingo on somebody else's card the only thing is is one person is claiming the gift on that one or claiming the, the prize on it so you guys figure all that out but a good old fashioned three way is what I call it and, and they always like the name it's it's a bunch of uh, old perverts so shout out <laughs> to you old perverts um, right on sounds like some tasty beer I have to come for Christmas I'll definitely have Dan uh, bring bring me out there yeah man I'll be there for sure well maybe <laughs> I'm there on the weekends usually but uh, there's a lot of funky beer so we have a lot we have probably 12 beer that we keep kind of constantly and then they have these rotators and they probably had about a hundred different rotators right now there's a s'more stout and it's kind of like a sweeter stout 7.5 percent there's a pumpkin saison which is 8.2 there's a juice box Juice Box Hero, which is the first beer we had. The Hazy IPA. There's the Campfire Coffee Stout. I think they're out of the Lime Lager, but it's basically, think of kind of like a premium Bud Light Lime. Like a high quality Bud Light Lime. There's the Home Turf Smoke Lager, which that's a collaboration with another brewery. It's just like, it tastes like a campfire, honestly. And then there's a Rum Hand Lager, which I, I wanted to be impressed with it, but I'm really not. And a lot of people aren't, and even a lot of brewers aren't. I wish it was more rum and less ham, but instead it's more ham and less rum. Extra ham. Yeah, it's extra ham. But I do like the sunny Philadelphia reference, the rum ham. Either way, um, we'll put these off to the side. We're going to go ahead and jump into the first beer of the night. That is an actually canned beer that is not Pretoria. Honey baked ham is my favorite for Turkey Day. Uh, we should do a collaboration with them and do a honey baked ham rum ham lager. No, we've already got a rum ham lager, but we do collaborations with the Bread House, which is pretty cool. That's a local place. And uh, they have a food truck, which is the Bush and Mia, which is awesome. I've been trying to get them to do a, a, a poutine. I think it would sell well. You ever had poutine? I have actually. It's so good. It's like the best drunk food ever. Just all that cheese and the. Yeah, if I could, if there was some place in town that sold poutine 24 hours, let's say I could go to cookout or something and they just had 24 hour poutine, it'd be over. <laughs> it's changing the game. Changing the game. I mean, if you guys are unfamiliar with poutine, it's basically french fries as the base cheese curds which is like the squishy cheese think of like a mozzarella but really kind of like on a denser squishy kind of yeah so cheese curds and then some kind of gravy on top so beef gravy uh but you can doll it up you know you can add bacon to it you can add chives you can add garlic you can add you know you can change it from regular fries to waffle fries or you mix know. it up get a little yeah. get a little cute with it but the basic thing is fries cheese, cheese. curds gravy I had that when I went up to Maine. And yeah, like Mount they'll Katata. have it up there. Anything up getting close to Canada, you're going to find some poutine. Uh, there's actually a really good place in, I 
think it was Athens. It's called World Famous, and they've got a, a solid poutine that I try to make sure I get every time I go. I'm glad that stayed. So this is three-day IPA. It's a session IPA, which usually sessions are a little bit lower on the ABV. They're called like all-day IPAs, something you can you can drink all day. Think of like a how a Bud Light is and versus a Budweiser. This would be the Bud Light for IPAs. It's got Amarillo and Mosaic hops. It's from uh, Three Taverns, which is known for very good sours. And it's a double dry hopped at 5.3. It's listed as Tropical Summer Quencher. Three day IPA. I'll put this where you guys can see it. I suppose I should get this in a way. All right. Bellissimo. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that is a Three Taverns beer there, if you guys catch a gander of that. All right, we're back over here. Blake Barlow, what's what's it going on, man? Should make some cranberry beer. Uh, I think Three Taverns actually made a cranberry beer. I think that was their Enchantress, which is a cranberry sour. It was actually really good. I'm gonna make this in a way you can actually see it, or that I can see it. Yeah, that'll suffice. Right on. Blake Barlow over there at Pivot Family. Yeah. So let's get into it. Here, I'll prime this where we can see it. Prost. Cilantro. Cilantro. <laughs> Cilantro. Definitely mosaic hops, for yeah. sure. If you guys want to catch a gander of that beer one more time. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe where I'll be seeing a little bit better. There. Is that better? Molto bene. You should do a whiskey special on the show one day. You're trying to get me messed up. <laughs> now, I wanted to have a whiskey show. Whenever um, Jake was on the show, Matt Allen uh, is big into whiskey. It would be awesome to have him on the show. But um, I I don't know. I feel like I'd get super tore up. Like you guys would see me just extra drunk. Is the world ready for that, though? I don't know. I would just end up walking off camera and doing dumb shit. Who knows? Who knows what kind of chaos that would bring? <laughs> But yeah, no, so this is a mosaic hop with, what did it say, Amarillo as well? Amarillo, yeah. Amarillo and mosaic. So very similar to the hops that are prominent in the um, Juice Box Hero, but this is not a hazy. So that uses, the Juice Box Hero from Pretoria uses Amarillo and Galaxy hops. This is Amarillo and mosaic. Now mosaic are some of my least favorite hops. There's something very stringent about it that maybe I don't like, I don't know. That would be hilarious. Are you coming on and drink whiskey with us, Blake? If I'm gonna be a fool, you're gonna be a fool too, okay? This side is not, by side. This is not a one, one part deal. <laughs> We're both in this together. So you guys watching on Twitch, um, which I might do it on Facebook Live too, I think this, Coming up Thursday, this episode I'm going to do on, I don't know if I'm going to do it on Twitch. Twitch silent. So Twitch, Facebook will just tell you like, hey, this is copyrighted material. Don't, don't post it. Or, you know, at the very end, they'll mute it, mute the parts that have the music. Twitch will just kind of like, if it's too excessive, they'll just remove the whole video or they'll mute the parts that have the music. So. I'm thinking about doing a, an episode Thursday inside the radio station. Not dealing with beer, but I might throw some bruise news 
is what I like to call it on the radio, Bruise News. And for anybody that's unfamiliar, I have a radio slot on Thursday nights called The Hive, where I say the music is uh, sweeter than honey and just as smooth. It's kind of, kind of corny, but I feel like it encapsulates kind of what the music is. It's everything from soul to, I've thrown some like old blues in, I've thrown some crooners and some old jazz, so it's kind of music that I like. Whiskey, I'll be passed out on the first hour. Yeah, whiskey. So I don't actually have a palate for that yet, honestly. Like whiskey, when I was in my younger days, uh, I was playing kind of one of the drinking games and it was like my first drink of the night and there was this cup in the middle, it was waterfalls, and there was a cup in the middle that had everything from like E&J brandy, had a lot of whiskey in there. And it's a card game, so you pull certain things, when you pull a certain one, you know, sometimes you pour some of your drink into the middle and my first pull of the game, I had to drink everything that was in this cup. Mm. So it's like whiskey, like I said, E and J brandy, some other oddities. Maybe there was some beer in there too. It was, it was a cauldron of filth, and uh, I wasn't excited about it. But it was my first drink of the night, and somebody makes me laugh, like as I'm drinking it, and I just shoot it out my nose. It's just like, you know, like milk goes. It's just whiskey coming out of my nose. So I couldn't drink whiskey for a long time. So I think in the, in my younger days where I would have acquired a palate for whiskey. I was just getting goosebumps thinking about whiskey. So, all in due time, I suppose. Eventually it'll happen. Yeah. I don't think I have the kind of mentality to become an alcoholic from whiskey, but <laughs> I'll definitely get drunk on the episode with whiskey. Maybe there'll be people who want to watch just to see me get tore up. I mean, I feel like I would tune into that show. I don't think I've been... I, I've been drunk one time this year. Now I've been buzzed. I've had like a, a, an okay little buzz, but I've been drunk, I think one time, and it was an episode with Sky. And I actually haven't seen him on this episode, but uh, Sky Barnes. We did an episode, and it was just all sours. And it was an episode where he, he and his sister, we we worked it out where Sky Barnes and Hannah Barnes were coming, and we went all the way to Tallahassee. They both sang songs separately and sang songs together, and then we drank crap tons of beer and sours. We had tons and tons of beer. And then afterwards, after the show ended, we drank some more, and uh, mm. it was like majority sour. So it was like all that acid just on my stomach. Oh, yeah. So the only time I've thrown up this year was from that episode. And like, I don't know. I just don't really get drunk like that, but I definitely did that episode. I was gone. I was gone. I'm interested to go actually go back. So Facebook's pretty good about saving your videos. Yeah. So all of these have kind of been archived, and I'm thinking about going back and just kind of downloading them. So it's going to be a fuck ton of them, actually, to download. We've been doing the show well over a year, and uh, I probably have maybe 10, 10 episodes actually downloaded. So I should probably download them before, you know, it stops down downloading them and I don't have that option anymore I mean I've got a year's worth of Stuff shows just lost. just lost yeah gone in the wind it would be it'd be awful so let's finish this one up do you want to go into this one next yeah I'll or split. do you want to go into this one next I like that run right there this, oh like it is yeah, now just like that okay alright Like I said, guys, the number is down here. If you guys want to call in and talk some shit, you'll be on live, not TV, but TV. TV. You'll be on live. You can talk shit. If you want to say, you want to call up just enough to say, y'all ain't shit, and hang up, cool. We encourage that. We want to hear it. Yeah, call in and talk some shit. Two pegs down. We've actually, so I had an episode one time with, uh, do you know Chris Morrell, dog trainer? Used to own World Camp CrossFit. Yeah. So we, I had an episode with him one time, and I put my number up. It was my first episode. No, it, I, don't act, I don't even think I put my number up. So what happened is, is since his phone number is on his actual website, somebody called up when they found his website. You know, they called up for, like, dog training, but they called up, and he's like, I don't know who this is. I keep calling. I was like, An I'm like answer it. Put it on live. And then, you know, he put the thing down, and the guy had, it was a ridiculous episode. Um, 
the guy was like, hey, I, I, live, out, I live out in this and this area, whatever. And it sounds super country. He's faking it, obviously, or, or uh, accentuating or adding to he's it. He's definitely putting on. Yeah, and he's like, I used, to, I used to pork this girl named Christy out here in this area. She used to live at this address. And I was like, okay. And he's like, I used to live there. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I used to pork the shit out of her. And he was, like, just talking shit. And uh, it was just funny watching Chris have this viewer who knew obviously some information about him that was right. aside from his website about dog training and we were talking about having sex with his girlfriend mm. and uh, just seeing how, how cool and collected he was and he's like Not yeah I want to bring my dog out there he's a golden retriever I'm going to sick him on you have him tear you up and he's like alright bring him out and I goes it's a very interesting episode and that's actually where I, I got the uh ideal for the phone because I was like this is actually really funny like if anybody calls in it's a funny experience people can hear you on on you know Twitch or Facebook whatever you're watching and uh, yeah it just it was it was really interesting I, th I thought it was really cool I have to find a way to make people actually want to call in yeah that'd be a that'd be the trick even though I have the number down at the bottom Nobody actually calls in. Very rarely. So we had somebody last week. Or do we have two last week? Yeah, we had two last week. We had Todd, who ended up showing up. Todd and then... Uh, I feel like we had one more. Chris. 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 Wyndham's partner. It's about a... Uh, Candyman? No. Can yeah. No, he showed up. I don't think he called, did he? No, no. Uh, are you asking who all called? Yeah. Uh, Jace, he's a pharmacist out oh, in yeah, Colorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and another guy, but he wouldn't connect the phone. So. I think Todd called. Yeah, Todd also called. He yeah. was the last person. Yeah, no, I love the phone. I think it's a great idea. I love people being able to call in and talk some shit. Sometimes they talk shit. Sometimes they just want to talk. Sometimes they just want to be heard. And, and you do it, you know, you're right here underneath the microphone. So when you call in, no matter what you want to say, you'll be live. It's so if you want to get your message out, if you want to say, like, something about your local politicians, like, John John Jenkins ain't shit, and, you know, and you want to hang up, cool, run it. If you want to say, Pokemon Gold is the best Pokemon ever existed, and hang up, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just call in. Say something. Yeah, I think it'd be funny regardless. We can give life and therapy advice. Yeah, I don't. I'm. We're neither one of us are, are qualified or experienced in to any do that. way whatsoever. But we will offer free consultation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got your your whore ass girlfriend, your cheating ass girlfriend. Uh, you know, you want to know how to take care of it? Call us up. We'll, we'll tell talk you. some shit. We'll, we'll we'll talk about that hoe ass bitch, and we'll <laughs> tell you what you need to do. So. Um, obviously, like, I'm not going to say obviously, but this three-day IPA from Three Taverns, it is good, but it's not memorable. No, like, I not. won't remember it, honestly. I won't remember it. And I'll, after doing the show for so long, it's hard to find beer that I'll actually remember. I had to start archiving. So I take up the week of the beer I've had, and I'm, I'm pretty good at recognizing whether I've had it or not. So every Monday, I have six to eight beers. And I'll recognize the label pretty quickly after about a year of doing this, if I've had it or not. Um, I, yeah, I had to start archiving it. And I originally wanted to get with uh, Courtney Mason, which she used to be on the show. She was a big Jake fan. Or she's Courtney Hudson now. She's married to my, my boy Chad. But she, um, I wanted her to do like untapped reviews of all the beer but done in a romance novel like a corny 80s romance novel <laughs> like as he put the IPA to his lips he smelt it reminds him of old time sitting in the sun naked and you know just that kind of like just do untapped versions of each of it his lips quivered in anticipation as the mosaic in Amarillo hops Touched his palate. Right on. What's going on? 
Hello. What's going on, gentlemen? This is Taco. Taco 83. What's going, What's on, going Taco? on, man? Not so much. How are you guys? We are great, man. Hopefully you're coming through okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine over here. Just over here drinking some good old Budweiser. Budweiser, man. Why don't you get some good beer? Yeah, why don't you send me some of that up? I could send you some Pretoria beer. Yeah, now, that'd be great, man. If you're drinking, if you're drinking Budweiser, chances are your palate isn't. You you might not appreciate all of the beer that we're drinking. I don't like anything wet and alcoholic. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, no, I would be down. I, I had to find a way to send it. Um, so through either my. I don't know if I have my. I think I have my Instagram and my Facebook linked through. Through Twitch, and if not, you can you can do private whisper, and uh, I can try to find a way to send you some beer. I'll send it as like molasses or something like that, and I'll send you kind of a mix. If you're down, and then we can do some like kind of beer swap. If you're down, if not, then we'll work something out. Yeah, man, I'll be down for that. Uh, I've just got to do some uh, exploring and find some. Uh some good beer up here, you know, to send down to you. I know, uh, I don't know if you ever tried Iron Steady or Rolling Rock. What was it? Rolling Rock, you said? Yeah, Rolling Rock or uh, Iron City. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've had both Iron City and Rolling Rock. So Rolling Rock is, is a very well-known brewery, and they, they don't get too far out into the funky craft stuff, but I think Iron City does, does they do craft beer. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. I like uh, both of those beers. Uh, Iron City's my favorite, though. So, um, so you're you said you're right outside of Pittsburgh, correct? Yeah, in between Pittsburgh and Morgantown, probably about fifty miles south of Pittsburgh, and probably about twenty miles north of Morgantown. So I'm like right on the border. So, what do you think about Philly? Um, Philly's all right, you know, I mean, I don't like Pumpkin Man, you know, I'm born and raised here, so, you know, I mean, I actually want to try to get out of this state, but, you know, this will always be my home state. No, I feel that. We live, we live in Georgia, so, um, we feel that. Like, we, we like a lot of things about the area, but there's also some things we don't like, and once you get to my age and your age, you've kind of... I don't know, you've kind of reached your point to where you kind of want to live somewhere else. Like, Georgia for me will always be my home, and Albany will always be my home, but I kind of want to live somewhere else. Yeah, you told me, I was listening to your thing, you said that you were moving to uh, Nashville. Are you excited about that? Yeah, I'm excited. I've got uh, me and my old um, partner on the show, Jake, so he's a guitar builder up in Nashville, and... He's fixing guitars for super famous people, and he, he's already got an apartment out there. We, we talked about buying a house out there for a while, or at least maybe not in Nashville buying a house, but within 30 to 45 minutes outside of Nashville. And I've got pretty close to my 20%, and he's working his 20% up. So we'll bring in 40% to, you know, to buy a house outside of Nashville. So I'm, I'm excited about that, and we'll use it as a home base, and I'll still do my travels. Because once the borders open up, I'm going to be ready to travel again. You got the itch. Oh, yeah, for sure. Now, do you play guitar? I don't play guitar. Jake plays guitar, but there he's in a weird conundrum where, or, so the more he works on guitars, the less he plays guitars. So his guitar playing is still good, but it's not, I think, what it used to be. Now that he's repairing guitars, um, he's putting more time into that. Like, he's repairing guitars for... Like, I think um, Taylor Swift brought him four guitars recently, and okay. Haley Williams brought him some guitars, and Peter Frampton, and ZZ Top, and so he, he's working on really famous guitars, um, but the more time he spends on that, the less time he can spend on actually playing guitar. Yeah, that's awesome. I have two guitars here. I have an electric and a, uh, a acoustic, but uh, they just collect dust. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've got some people locally that can that can teach you. I'm sure there's people like right around the corner who can teach you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's there's a bunch of people that I know that I can teach. Uh, I 
place is just, you know, finding time, uh, you know, with everything going on with work and everything and me starting school and trying to run for a Senate, you know, so it's kind of like everything comes together all at once, so it's kind of like hard to find time to learn how to do all that. So how, how soon are you trying, how soon are you trying to, to fill this Senate position? Uh, probably here in three or four years, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe five. So, so do you, uh, you know, do you, oh, go ahead. Do you carry a position already, like, um... In local government. In local government, are you? Do you have a presence in local government? Uh, no, I don't. But uh, my friend, one of my friends, uh, one of my good friends that I went to high school with, uh, he uh, was a state representative here for I don't know about three years, and uh, I'm also uh, the apartment that I rent off of. The guy that owns the building, he also was a uh, state representative before he was. So, yeah. Uh, so I know, I know my way around, you know, politics and stuff, so, and I know some people in office and everything, so I want to start talking to them a lot, you know, see what i got to do, you know, to uh, get this ball moving. Yeah. Have you looked into being, like, somewhat of a city commissioner, like having some say-so about your, your, local, your local city? Because that, that'll go a long way with once you're known with the people, you know, when the ballot goes out and there's people who are doing voting, most people are going to choose, unless they're really big into politics, they're going to just going to choose a name that they know well or a name that they've seen. So with you being a city commissioner, like what we have locally, we've got a lot of them and they put posters out and they're, they're pretty well known. If a Senate seat came up, most people would probably pick them just based on not even their politics or their, their standing, but because they're familiar over the other over the other names. Right, right, right. Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty well known just as a uh, civilian around my town and stuff. As you mentioned, because uh, my last name's Amos, so he would say, you know, hey, do you know Famous Amos? Everybody's like, oh, yeah, I know Famous Amos. He's a good guy. He's a real good guy. So uh, I think that's kind of like uh, in a benefit of my way also. But, yeah, I would definitely check into uh, running for, like, Mr. or something. I mean, see what I could do there. You're, you're still a young cat, so even in three to four years, whenever you decide to go for that, that seat, uh, even if you don't, um, it still is all in your favor. Even if you don't win that seat or you don't get that position, it's all in your favor because the, the next election, you'll be good to go. You're a little bit more well-known and you're more established. More established, so the longer you're in it. So it, it's going to benefit you regardless. The sooner you get into it, the better. Oh yeah, for sure, man. I'm I'm excited about it, man. You know, just uh, you know, it it just something just needs to change. You know, I mean, this is so much bad stuff. Like I was talking about, you know, the veterans and stuff. You know, how to get pushed aside when they come back and everything. You know, I mean, things just need to change, like big time. No, I I I feel that like seeing even in in Georgia or even in this small town, seeing a bunch of people who are poor panhandling and asking for money and you know that they're they're veterans you know these are guys who went out and you know whether it was the vietnam or or korean war or whatever else they were in that they went out and fought for their country and that they're pretty much neglected or or pushed under the like sweeped under the rug or swept under the rug yeah like like i know some veterans around here you know i mean and, you know, when they came back, so they were like, you know, the only thing I got was a uh, handshake and, you know, thanks for serving, you know. But, you know, like, they need other stuff, you know. They have, like, psychological problems, drug addiction and stuff, you know. They need medical stores to, like, cover this stuff. And they go to the VA, and the VA's like, well, we can't help you, you know. And you know, what, are they, what are they supposed to do from there, you know? I mean, Yeah. So, no, I, I understand. Yeah, Whenever you... You've put so much into, like when you've given so much of your life, you know, you've gone off to a war, or you've, you've been in these situations, and it's kind of affected you mentally, and you've relied on uh, on drugs or some kind of substance to, to kind of cope with that, um, and knowing that there's nobody there to kind of like watch your back or to like, you know, have your back. I mean, that's, that's rough. That's rough. So if you're if you're fighting for that, then that that's awesome, man. I, I think that more. I don't know if we showed a lot more love for 
our military or you know our past personnel then it goes a long way you, you i think we could even model that after other countries that yeah we're one of the few that that have this kind of issue where you have people who have fought in multiple wars and who are panhandling for for quarters to buy some coffee or or you know maybe who have some kind of maybe they got you know post traumatic stress disorder and they've ha- and they've gotten addicted to something to cope with that there's other countries that have, have handled it in a better way that I don't know. I, I've traveled all all over. I'm not going to say I've traveled all over the world, but I've got a good bit of countries under my belt, and I've done a good bit of traveling, and I've never seen it like I've seen it in the States. I've never seen it. Like, right. if I saw panhandlers and, you know, people begging on the side of the streets, chances are they're probably Eastern European uh, or they were, like, from from Libya or they're refugees or something like that. Like they're seeking a better life and they're working their way up. So it's, it's never been war heroes or veterans or anything like that. It's actually the first country I've seen, seen it like that. Right, right, right. Like, like I say, you know, like I was a firefighter for six years and I was, uh, I was in EMS for 13 years and, uh, just uh, within the last couple of years, one of my partners, you know, he committed to his time because of PTSD, you know? I mean, it, it's just to say, you know, that, you know, that there's nobody there to help them or nobody that they can turn to, you know, to uh, talk about this. Yeah. So, yeah. That's like, I, I'm, I'm willing to fight, man. I'm willing to fight for, you know, for what they need, you know, because, I mean, it's just, it's just not right. It's just not right for us, you know, for them to come back here and us just give them a handshake and be like, you know, be on your way, you know. I mean, it's just not right, you know. I mean, it really hit, you know, it's really deep in my heart, you know, that I just can't stand it, man. It just, you know, I kind of get a little choked up to talk about it. No, I, I, I see that you're you're definitely very in, invested emotionally and mentally in that. Absolutely. And, and, yeah, passionate. That I think if even if you don't find what you're looking for, maybe you don't get the seat or, you know, I'm not I, I hope that you do, but even if you don't, you'll still be in better standing the next time around and the next time around. You're still a young cat. So you've got plenty of time and you you know, fight the good cause. Um I don't know. My my dad was in the military, and uh, you know he didn't go off to any wars. He was, you know, he was Air Force, as some people call it, Chair Force. You know, he he, he fixed planes and he did aviation maintenance. Um, He definitely never went to any kind of battles, and he he never was in any kind of wars, and he 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 never saw his 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 friends die, and he never had this PTSD. so he, he kind of lucked out as far as that aspect. He, he wasn't on the front lines, and he didn't see this kind of stuff that I know some of these guys out here who are having a rough go of it have seen. Is that, is that, is the point there is that he still served, you know, and he was still trying to, you know, help out his country and everything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he might not have went to war, but I bet he knows a lot of people that, you know, that a lot of his friends or somebody who did go to war, you know, came back and he's seen what they went through. And I bet he feels probably the same way that I do about it. No, he probably does. So, I would, I would, I would, uh, I would probably bet on that. And, and, you know, I was thinking, you know, there's all these insurance companies around uh, that are around in the United States and stuff. I mean, you, how hard would it be for them to donate, like, each of them to donate, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000, you know? I mean, if we get, like, this company to do that, you know, do you know how many veterans that would help out? Yeah, I mean, in the whole grand scheme of things, it's chump change to some of these guys out there who are making multiple, multiple millions. You know, I was talking to somebody today that just their, just one of their condos in Atlanta was, you know, three or four million, and that's chump change to them. Like, just wow. just a couple million that these guys throw out on, on a car that they change out, thank you, a car that they change out every year would go would go worlds for some of these guys who are, who are having a, a tough time of it. 
And th these guys are pretty much, I mean, they're put on the back burner, honestly. These, they're, they're having to call people and get, you know, put on waiting list and, and you know, call this number and then call this number and then wait on a, a, a queue. And they're just, I don't know, man. It, it's a shitty situation. <laughs> They just get the run around a lot. That's what they get. They just the get the run around. around a lot. Just get a little bit of help. Just get a little bit of help. That's all they want. Just a little bit of help. You know, somebody to say, yeah, I could, I could, I could find you a prescription for this medicine or something. You know, but you know, nobody wants to see that. I, I don't, I don't really um, know what kind of mentality these get, like. Not the guys from war, but the guys who actually have the money or the people who have some say so. Say so. I don't know what kind of mentality they have to just, I don't know, like completely neglect these guys. They're, they're using them like, uh, there's an old Metallica song called Disposable Heroes. And uh, I used to be a Metallica fan when I was a kid. But, I mean, that's fair. Like, going off to war, doing these things, you know, fighting the good fight, and then you come home and you're, you're a disposable hero. Like, they're pushing you off to the side right. and you're in a waiting list, and it's it's super shitty, honestly. Not to be right, right, right. But uh, I really just called in just to say that, uh, you know, that I love the stream, I love the show, and uh, I like what you guys are uh, doing down there. Thanks, man. Thanks. Hopefully uh, soon. So I've got some interviews coming up soon. I've got... Um, so next week, uh, I should be in Nashville, and I'm going to be with uh, Jake in Nashville. We're going to do an episode up there. I think Leah, I don't know if you've been on an episode with Leah, but Leah will be, probably be on the episode. We'll have some funky beer from Nashville. And I think the episode following okay. that, we've got uh, Wild, Wor Wild Herbs of Eolita. It's one of our local, she's kind of like a, I'm not going to say she's a witch because she's not a witch, but she's like an herbalist, so she like com collects sage and saffron and all this kind of stuff and puts it together in like bouquets and sells it whether you want to burn it or have it in your house for nice smells she used to work at pretoria with me and she's got a very unique voice and a very unique personality sounds like stevie nicks i wanted to have her on the show at, yeah i know i wanted to have her on the show at one point where she's just reading children's books and just have her in like a, a yeah i wanted her late at night you know probably you know, when normal kids go to sleep, probably, you know, 10 o'clock, 9 or 10 o'clock, and just reading children's books, you know, once or twice a week. But uh, COVID happened, and it was very difficult to get her on. She's got uh, some family that's very susceptible to it. So we kind of put her interview on the back burner. And then um, I've got an episode on, at the Thronatiska probably coming up soon. Thronatiska is a local kind of like an art museum information area. So we'll have an episode inside the planetarium that they have. So there'll be planets and constellations and stars that are, you know, accurate in the distance. I'll probably do an episode on a train. They've got an old 1800s train that I'll be doing an episode on. So I'm okay. super excited, cool. man. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it, man. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Like, you, uh, uh, like I've been here, like, every Monday. Now, I didn't get a chance to get on uh, – I don't think it was uh, – yeah, last week I did get a chance to talk, but uh, I know that I was chatting with you, and I think you had a uh, another radio host on there. He said that he wasn't too big of a drinker. <laughs> oh, Kenny, but, uh, yeah. Uh, Kenny's a radio yeah, personality yeah. with me. We're both in the Q102 uh, Queen Bee Radio. He plays kind of okay. like Gen X Revival. Think of kind of like Bush, you know, things from our youth. And uh, I play things that are like Sam Cooke and Otis Redding. And so okay. it was supposed to be a three-part radio personality. It's supposed to be me, Kenny, who does the Gen X Revival, and uh, Wyndham Towson, who does the jazz show on Sunday. So it's going to be a whole radio show, but Wyndham couldn't work it out. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, uh, I'll let you guys get back to the stream. It was uh, a very pleasure talking to uh, both of you. Yeah, man. Talk with us again, man. Yeah, you guys have a good night, man. You too, man. Likewise. We'll see you soon. All right. All right. Ciao. Thanks again, Taco, man. Super cool guy. I, I hope you get this seat in the Senate, man. Make some big changes for the veterans because they are shit on. They are shit on severely. But uh, we're going to get back into the beer. Um, we got costumes and karaoke. 
I really like the logo for this one, and it's from Dogfish Head. So Dogfish Head makes really good beer. They're world famous. Um, I've never had this beer, so I, I'm super excited about it. It is uh, 8%, and it is a weird beer. I'm, I'm gonna be real. It's an Imperial Cream Ale with turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, and star anise. Anise, anise. A-N-I-S-E, if you know how to pronounce that, let me know, because I do not know. I'm thinking it's the little, uh, there's kind of like a, a thing you see in potpourri, and it kind of looks like a star. I'm thinking it's that, it's very, very good smell. Um, I'm gonna prep this up so you guys can see it. Looks good? Looks good. By Lissimo. All right, I'm gonna kind of give this a twirl for you guys. I think maybe in the future, man, I might wanna have like a display that rotates. You think that'd be cool? I, I would personally love to see that. Just like a really slow, just a slow rotate. I used to have one, honestly. Taco, yeah, for sure, man. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. By the way, I stream also. Uh, Ryan's really smelly, smelling that thing. What's up? Leah, what's going on? What's going on, Leah? I like the label. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, so post down here your uh, taco. Post your, your stream. Let us know what you stream, and I'll definitely check it out. It will jump Ooh, on it. That's a smell. That's why I keep smelling it, Leo. Thank you. <sighs> Leo talking all that shit. Call shit. up. Call up, Leo. Talk call shit. Up, talk some shit with us. Call Brandon's phone. Yeah, so Leo came on the episode, uh, this is probably like two or three months ago, and she, she got kind of pissed off at me. And, you know, I get it in hindsight. Like, I'd already had like four, four beers or so at the time, but... You know, Lee is pretty, and people on Twitch like to see pretty girls. I get it. I like to see pretty girls, too. So I had what was called, a, I called it the Yam Cam, or the Gam Can. And it was a, a cam that was kind of just focused on Leah. It was called the Gam Can. And Gam Cam. And she was Gam she cam. was not about it. And I think that was actually the turning point for Leah. I think that's when she decided she was not really about it. She didn't have the love for the show like I did, and you know, to each their own. Uh, I'm not, I'm not bitter about it. You know, I liked having Leah on the show. She's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are quote, wondering where these comments are coming from, and you're on Twitch, I also am streaming. I'm using Restream, and I'm pushing this through uh, through Facebook Live as well. So uh, if you're curious, if you type in Bumio. On Facebook, Bumio, you'll see Bumio, uh, Brandon Bumio as the last name or something like that. Bumio is my moniker because my actual name is so plain that you'll have to scroll through thousands to find me. So but you'll never find the same one like him. Don't talk about my yams. You don't have much of yams. Wow. Not not throwing shade, but you a wow. skinny girl. You ain't got no yams. Go sit under the tree. You ain't got no yams. You're going to need to thicken up to get some more yams. Gams, whatever. Same, same. Yams and gams. They go they go the same way. Gams is more of like an old 20s term. Yeah. That's, that's old school. But yams. You know, the girl got them yams. That's that's a new term. Um, I stream Dirt 2.0. Um, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. American Truck Simulator. So these are all simulators. Uh, so you... Is your interest in firefighting, uh, does it play into this American Truck Simulator? I'm curious, because most people on Twitch are kind of streaming, you know, like the most popular games right now. So you're going to see all PS5 games, so that, you know, once it comes out, I think it already dropped, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. So you're going to see PS5 games, and uh, exclusive games. You're going to see Xbox one X or what is it now? Xbox One XS or one Yeah, I don't X. I can't keep up with it. Leah, don't be offended. You're a skinny girl. Embrace your skinniness. <laughs> your man loves it. He loves it long time, okay? Don't don't be worried about it. It's okay. Uh no, that's a different game called Emerge NYC. 
My, my reason why I was saying this is because you're playing games that most people aren't going to watch on Twitch. Like, most people are watching the most, the top tier, like, most popular games. Fortnite, which one of the Call reasons, of Duty. Yeah, these games. So that's one of the reasons why it's hard for us to be seen on Twitch. And since I've been doing a restream and I've been trying not to become an affiliate so I can still do restream, once you become an affiliate, you can't do restream anymore. I like to simultaneously cast to multiple things. Um, but yeah, so it's difficult for people who don't play the basics, you know, and if you're not like a super pretty girl with your titties out, no shade throwing out to you pretty girls with titties out, to each their own, play the, you know, play the cards you're dealt, I, I don't hate. This beer's gonna be weird, I can already yeah. smell it. I, I can smell I've it. I'm not even myself. sure if I can get all the way through it. But I haven't tasted it yet, but I, I'm just basing it off smell alone. You're just hoping it it's uh, weird, goes man. down. Yeah. I'm still smelling it. Mm. It's good. It's good. So the smell was throwing it off a little bit, but it's good. So it's an Imperial Cream L with all kinds of weird additives. And Dogfish Head, they really don't let me down. Very rarely do they put a beer out that I'm like, yeah, that's shit. Like, I didn't like Dogfish Head's uh, Pumpkin Ale. I wasn't, a, I wasn't a big one. Microsoft Flight Simulator gets a lot of viewers. Okay. I would not think of that. When I go to Twitch um, and I look at, like, it has the most viewed, it's all people who are playing just the most famous, most popular kind of games. And I get it. To each, you know, like I said, to each their own. I'm not too big of a fan of this one. No? I don't think so. It's not it's not unobtainable. Like it's not undrinkable. It's just of of the three, it's probably my least favorite. Yeah, for sure. I think the smell just threw me so bad at the beginning. Yeah, that's fair. Leah, if you have a problem with it, come fight me. You know where we're at right now. Let's come fight on uh, let's fight on live TV. Or you could call up and talk some shit. I will be handing an extra weapon to the loser of the fight. The phone number's down here if you want to call up and talk some shit, Leah. Even if you want to call up and say, you ain't shit, and hang up, you can do that. I would I would do that if I were you. I would seize that opportunity. Nah, Leah's weird on cameras, and she's she, she, she don't like all that attention. Mm. Every time she's on camera, she's like... Shrivels up, hides. Yeah, yeah she, she pruned up. She, she raisined up. She wasn't about it. I can definitely definitely taste all the little. I was definitely visual. getting that cream ale. Um, I'm trying to get the cinnamon. It said vanilla and cinnamon, right? Yeah, I taste the vanilla on the very back end. If you guys want to see that again. So it says it has, it's an imperial cream ale with, no, so there's no vanilla, but there's turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, and star. Anise? Anise? Anise. Anise? <laughs> there's so many different ways. Um, oats, cardamom with vanilla beans. Okay, it does have vanilla. Brewed and bottled dogfish head, craft brewery. Uh, collaboration with the Boston Beer Company. Right on. Cool logo, it's got this amp looking very grungy with some bands on. I dig it. You guys have a good night. I have a class in the morning. All right, Taco, it's been a pleasure, man. Fight the good fight. Pronunciation of IPA transcription English. So it has to do with, with, with actual beer. It is an ease. Anise. 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 Puss, 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 puss. Puss, 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 puss. If you guys didn't watch the last episode, you probably wouldn't understand it. I'm trying to remember where the original reference was. I think it was somebody getting bit by a spider 
and in instead the, in instead of instead of actual spider web coming out, it's uh, pus. So we're like pus, 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 pus. But then eventually it it just morphed into puss, 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 puss. <laughs> yeah. So anybody says anything super stupid, we're like puss, 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 puss. Yeah. So that's just kind of how the alcohol worked out, and I think it kind of. Uh, exasperated things when Todd showed up out of nowhere <laughs> being all toddy and everything the hotty toddy and yeah he was talking about like secondhand smokes <laughs> like seven different kind of flavors secondhand smokes and I'm like Todd what if somebody comes out with third hand smokes and eight or nine different flavors and he's like no 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 <laughs> I made the reference to uh, something about Mary it wasn't something about Mary Maybe it was. It was. It I was. I think it was. It was when he picks up the hitchhiker. Yeah, it was. It was something about Mary. He picks up the hitchhiker, and he's like, "You've heard of like ten minute abs?" I don't remember the exact reference. It was ten minute abs. He's like, "We're gonna come out with eight minute abs." And he's like, "Well, what if somebody just comes out with seven minute abs?" He's like, "No, no, you can't do abs in seven minutes. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Like, that's kind of what I did to Todd, and that's kind of his response." I was like, guys, we got next week, third hand smokes. We got eight different kinds of flavors. And Todd's like, no, man, no, no, no. <laughs> you can't do that. I was like, Todd, come on, man. What, did, what is he, was he doing, like, creating, like, an instant line or cologne line? What was He's it? He's like, do you miss those car rides where your dad, where he would puff his cigarette and blow it right in your face? He's talking about, like, candles and uh, bath bombs and stuff, just weird stuff, like, uh, nice like drink coasters and yeah you can smell like secondhand smoke and you got Doral flavors and like marble reds yeah. and like <laughs> cam like I don't know it's it's stupid shit that Todd would come up with Todd was a uh, Todd was like hey man you inspired me man I'm gonna start traveling and shout out I love you Todd I'm not talking shit but he's like you inspired me man I'm gonna start traveling he's like I'm gonna put away a hundred dollars a month and I was like, dude, you can't do shit with $100. I was like, be more responsible with your money. I was like, I was like, put away $1,000 a month. I know somewhere within your budget, within your spending and how much you make, you should be able to put away $1,000 a month. And if not, you've got some. So let's say you make $2,000 a month. That's on the lower end. Like, not a lot of people are making. Like, $2,000 a month is pretty low. Like, well, I, so biweekly, let's say you make... $700, right? That puts you around $10 an hour. $700 at 40 hours a week. That's not, it's not, you know, don't, don't quote me on that, but $7 an hour, or $10 an hour at, at 40 hours a week. Your check's looking at $700 a month, $1,400 a month. Um, I don't know. Budget some. Look at how much you're spending. Look at, like, expenses that you don't need, whether you're going out drinking, which Todd is, uh, fast food, your Hulu, your Netflix, your other bullshit spending, you know, going to American Eagle or whatever it is you're spending your money at. Look at, like, budget. Have a little planner and write down everything you spend and figure out how much you actually spend on real shit, whether that's your car payment, your insurance, your rent, your power, whatever, and figure out what is shit that you can live without work out 500 to 1000 500 on the lower spectrum $1000 is the better i used to put away $2000 a month and like put money aside figure out and so do in so doing that you figure out how much it actually costs you to live a month like not factoring in food not factoring in everything else just your actual expenses for you just being an adult how much it costs you to live a month. Once you can do that, you know that when you take a trip, whether it's two weeks, three weeks, a month, three months like I do, you know exactly how much it's gonna cost you a month in expenses while you're gone. That's money right off the top that you have to factor in every month. So if, you, if it's $1,200 a month, whether it's $1,500 a month that you spend, so you need to, what, that's $1,450 that you need to have for three months to be gone. Then factor in your plane tickets, factor in, you know, some extra money for hostels or hotels or food or transportation. Like, it's easily, you can work it out. And you can, that's like, 
factoring it, that's being gone for three months. Like some of these guys are only going for like a week or two weeks. And if you're like, word of the wise, if you guys are traveling, um, if you go, if you only have a week, only go to one country, one city. A week is only, like you're going to Rome, spend one week. Like if you're trying to see Europe in a week, you're not gonna do it. You're gonna lose four days in transportation. And you've got three days to get, to see stuff and then go back to your plane because you're gonna lose a day in transportation. Like, let's say you fly into Rome and you're like, I really wanna see Paris. Cool, Paris is way the fuck away. Keep in mind, you gotta make it all the way back to Rome to, for your re return flight. So you fly into Rome at four o'clock, 4 p.m. because that's the earliest time you can get in. Check into your hotel or your hostel. You see Rome a bit, boom, you're, yeah, that's a day gone. So you've got six days left. You go to Paris, let's say you take a, a plane, that's a whole day lost right there. You, you're gonna have to wait for the plane. The plane might not fly out till three o'clock. So you're flying to, to Paris, you get check into the hostel, you've got three to four hours before shit starts closing. Like so, if you're going for a week, see one town. If you try to see two, three, four towns, you're losing a shit ton of time. You're losing a lot. So Rome, a week, you can see it, a lot of it. There's a lot of shit to see in Rome, but you can see a lot of it in a week. If you're going to Dublin, Ireland, you know, two or three nights in different bars and going to the Cliffs of Moher and going to Galway, and you can work it out in a week. It'll be stretched, but you can work it out. So, short bus, what's up? Every country has, um, I spent two years in Europe. I will tell everyone, hands down, Italy is the only place, if you go to, you have less than two weeks to travel. Every country has World War One and World War Two sites, old church and castles, but Italy has wine, Rome, and so much more. Venice. So I haven't done Venice, but Florence I loved. I did, um, I probably spent three or four weeks, my first trip to Europe, three or four weeks of my three months stint in, uh, in Italy. Now I didn't do, I didn't do two years, but Europe is amazing and you can see a lot just, I would say, I would tell people, if you're, if you got a week, just choose one town or one town in, in a neighboring town. So if you're like flying into to Madrid, you know, you've got enough time to see like all of Madrid. You can see Toledo and probably one other little small town that's within a train's right away. But it's, you, you got a week, you don't really have a lot of time. Uh, the same I would say comparable, if, if you had a friend that's not from Georgia, not even from around here, let's say they're from Oregon, and they're like, I got a week in Georgia, show me what you got. Show me what you got. I mean, what would you show them? I mean, I feel like I'd have to start just, you know, here in Albany, just show them around just a small, small town. Right, it's one day. Um, I would take them up through either Columbus or Macon, hit one of the nicer cities on the way okay. up. Okay. Would that do a half day or a day? You know, a half day. Because Columbus, you got the Riverwalk, you got um, you got Omaha Brewery, you got the Iron Bank Coffee, you got Scruffy Murphy's, you got, um, what's it called? You got Taste of India, which I mean, it's not like local to the area. Right. It's not like local food but it's taste of india is amazing um your iron bank coffee that's local you got uh cannon brew pub which is local so even a half day but i mean they do the river walk if they want to do the rapids if they're not from the area if they don't have rapids near yeah. them rapids would be like the one thing there's zip lining but yeah I, I just consider it like a half day or even call it a full day and then you drive up to you know, somewhere in Atlanta, you take a day or two to hit different places in Atlanta. Um, maybe. I mean, you're going to take a day all the way to get back for the most part, or at least a half day. Well, I'd probably go up to like North Georgia, like maybe um, any of those towns, Helen, somewhere yeah, up there. Yeah, beautiful. And then maybe come down through like Savannah or something. Mm -hmm. That's how I would do it. So you got, so from Albany to Atlanta, you're looking at what, three hours? give or take and then Albany to Helen you're looking at about three hours give or take because uh, it's kind of like Atlanta being almost straight up and Helen kind of being like you know off to the east 
But also, you got places like Cloudland Canyon, which is off to the uh, northwest, and then you got Tallulah Gorge, which is off kind of like north middle or northeast. You have, and there's there's lots to see. There's, I mean, if they're into history, you got Native American mounds, you got Andersonville, you got Savannah, you got Saint Augustine, you got all this kind of stuff to see. So, a week, if you guys are like really haul and tell, you can kill a lot of really key sites in Georgia. Uh, sorry, I've been missing short bus. I've been missing some of these. It says um, Venice. Uh, it says I was in Florence, did a wine tour, three wineries in one day. Now Florence is amazing. I love Florence. I love Southern Italy as well. I like, uh, well, Southern Italy, and then I like the mid, middle Umbra, uh, Tuscany kind of area. It's got great wine. The Etruscan stuff there is beautiful. It says Italy has been the best World War II sites too. Italy is freaking awesome. Italy is great. I actually like um, Eastern Europe. So I haven't done a lot of Eastern Europe, but what few countries I've been to have been fucking amazing. The food's good, the beer's good, the wine, the alcohol, the women, the, the history, everything's just wonderful. So, I'm a big fan. Did you, uh, did you spend some time in Germany? Did you see Dan, old Dan Erdman in Germany? He spent a lot of time there. He, the short bus is the one that said that um, they, they know Dan and DV pretty well. You know Dan, right? Yeah. Dan, you know DV? Yeah. Yeah, right on. They're super cool guys. I met hey both of them what's... drinking up here. Huh? I've met both of them drinking up here. Yeah. They spend a lot of time up here. So when the borders open up, are you going to work some way to travel? Yeah. my. If, if you need help, and, and if you guys need any help, if you have any questions, um, you can hit up. You can hit me up. Like, I'll, I'll give you my my two cents. I'm, I'm definitely not... The, the best person as far as that goes because I am frugal I am cheap like I want to get there and have the best experience possible the most real experience possible I'm not staying at the Venetian I'm not staying at these nice fancy ass hotels I want hostels I want to meet the locals I want to go to the small pubs I want to go to the hole in the wall places off the grid places that's me if you have any questions let me know the same same thing for you if you if there's a country you want to see, I can help you get there as cheap as possible. That's what, uh, that's actually how we first started talking was just, uh, you know, through Billy at uh, Mellow. That's how we started talking. Oh, was we Billy. Talked about traveling. He's playing his, shout out to Billy, man. Introduce Billy, yeah. Uh, he, cool people. He's been on the episode one time. Him and, um. Tony. Him and Tony came on the episode, yeah. I met Billy, so I used to live out there kind of by Sportsman Club. And Billy kind of grew up out there, and I was a super poor kid. And Billy, I'm not gonna say they were wealthy, but the, as far as in my mind as a child, they definitely were very wealthy. And you know, Billy had like a Super Nintendo, and he had crazy, crazy games. And I just didn't have all that, so I would go to Billy's house and like borrow games, or like I would, you know, like he was that that friend that had the games, and he was. We're both on that same kind of like nerd spectrum. You know, I played, like, a lot of old RPGs. I got into RPGs because of Billy. Like, Chrono Trigger was one of my first RPGs, and I fell in love. And then I went out and bought Secret of Mana, and so shout-out to Billy. Like, not that he's watching or anything, but, you know, shout-out to Billy. You want to go into this, what, Sunset Passion? Yeah, we'll go to it. Passion, fruit, tanger tangerine, vit beer. It's a wheat beer. So whenever I was in Germany, there was lots of, of World War II shit. Like, you couldn't go somewhere without finding. And, and I actually like the way that Germany has been handling it, or they have handled it. They were like, yo, we know we're pieces of shit. Or we, we know that we, we did some bad things. And instead of just, like, kind of covering it up or, like, not acknowledging it Germany did the complete opposite and they created large museums oh thank you it's good probably a little bit more to the left or this way is it like kind of in the middle yeah lit cool so I don't know 
I'll show you guys here. Beer, 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 beer. Uh, this is Sunset Passion. It's passion fruit and tangerine uh, wheat beer. Giving you guys the rotation. Letting you guys know what's up. What's the uh, what's the ABV on that one? 5.5 percent, and this is out of thank you, sir. This is out of New Realm, which uh, I was I had high hopes in New Realm, and so did our original brewer here, uh, Eric, who was from Russian River. Had a lot of high hopes because that brewer, their original brewmaster, which I don't know if he's still there, he he was very well known as far as brewmasters go, and Eric actually took a trip to try the beer when they first came out. And he, he wasn't really impressed, but they've done a lot since they first started out. I don't know if their original owners were like, look, these are the beers we want to put out. And the brewmaster was like, these are not really impressive beers. And he's like, I don't give a shit. Put them out. So I don't know if that was the case. But either way, their beer has, has gotten better. It says, seek what you thirst. Brewed in, Nor uh, in Georgia and Virginia. And it's a uh, Sunset Passion, Passion Fruit Tangerine Vit Beer says, in this in, uh, exclusive release, the subtle herbal spicy notes found in traditional vit beer are complemented by traditional passion fruit and tangerine sweetness. says, the color is gold with light haze. I can confirm. And the unique ingredients are passion fruit, tangerine, coriander, orange peel, and chamomile, or chamomile, as some say. So you got the logo, uno mas. Bueno. Cool. Let's get into it. It's got a good smell. Oh, it's good. It's got a breadiness to it that you would expect from the wheat beer. It's got like a, a tanginess, which I'm guessing is the, the tangerine. Um, I dig it. I actually really like it. It's it's smooth. It's it's light. To me, I, it's it's got a good taste. No, no, no. I, so I usually don't go with with wheats because they're usually kind of like basic bitch beers. But this one's actually really really good. So the reason I say that is because I I work at a restaurant where people are like, let me get a Blue Moon. If they don't get a Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light, or Michelob Ultra because they people have no taste in beer around here. They get, let me get a blue moon. That's, that's kind of what people get. It is what it is. Real L, what's up, Sky Barnes? Glad to see you back in it. Hey, Sky, when I get back from Nashville, we're doing an episode in Tallahassee, so I hope you're ready. And I'm also expecting to take back a shit ton of beer. I hope you've been collecting for me, and I've got, uh, I've got Venmo money, so I, I can send you. I've got lots of money. I can send you Venmo money. So if you think if you see something and you're like, "Hey, I don't think Brandon's had this," I'm gonna go ahead and grab it. Grab it. I have money. That's not an issue. I can pay you. I don't care if it's what's playing PlayStation. Right on PlayStation One or PlayStation Five. Shout out either way. But uh, even if it comes up to a couple hundred bucks, you know, I don't care. If you get beer that you think I'm gonna like grab it i'll buy it from you promise i'll buy it from you you don't have to worry about that like i said i don't care if it's a couple hundred bucks i've got the money for it so no worries if you see it somewhere if you see a bomber somewhere some exclusive beer you know ologies putting out something or like uh wasn't no there's ology there's proof there's um lake tribe any of those anything you think that i might like grab it because I, I assure you, when I go there, I'm going to go to one of the brew places. I'm either going to go to a brewery if they're open. Well, I'm going to do that for sure. But I'm also going to go to um, a packaging store, and I'm going to buy probably $70 to $80 worth of beer. So expect it. So run it. What's that Pretoria juice box talking about? So the first beer we had of the night was a juice box hero. And it is a hazy IPA at 7.8%, and it's got Amarillo and Galaxy Hops. Now, if you want one, I can make you a crowler of one. Um, but if I make a crowler of it, it would need to be drank within a week or two. 
So that means I would have to plan an episode. The only thing is, is my next two episodes are kind of planned out. I'm going to Nashville with an episode with Jake, and then I'm going to do the episode with Lauren at, uh, with the Wild Herbs of Eolita. That beer stop store has been posting fire, looking beers. I'll take some of that shit. You know I'll take some of that. I love me some dankers. Now, only thing, only thing I'm kind of bummed about is that since I'll move to Nashville, the trip to Tallahassee is just ridiculous now. It's ridiculous. It's probably five and a half, six and a half hours. Uh, I'm about to check it, honestly. Nashville to Tallahassee. Seven hours and 45 minutes. Good Lord. Seven hours and 40. It's almost an eight hour drive. Uh, no, I thought it was a sour, not a hazy. No, so it's Juice Box Hero. So it's a juicy, hazy sour. So it is super juicy. Some people say it, the, the actual glass when the beer is in it looks like a, a glass of bacon grease, honestly. This is not it. I was using it for reference. This is the uh, Sunset Passion from New Realm. Now, if you want some beer, uh, you never mentioned anything about it, but if you want some beer, I can bring you some down, some funky beer. I can try to find something that's maybe you can't get in Tallahassee. So... Let me know. Did you end up liking, you end up liking this a pretty good bit, right? Yeah, I think it's a really good beer. This is a great summer beer. Like, this is a really, really good beer. I think this is like the number two or the number three beer of the night. I don't know if it's the number one. We'll, we'll judge that because we still have one more beer left. Um, what do we say was like kind of the least favorite? Was it this one? Yeah, for me, for sure. Least favorite, Dogfish Head, which is, which is sad because Dogfish Head puts out some, some dankers. They put out some good-ass beer, and they get real funky with it. You know, even though they're a super well-known company, once they get well-known, they don't really put out, or as it is normally, they don't put out uh, funky craft beer. Right. They find their, like, set six or seven, and that's all they run out. But Dogfish had been known for putting out some real funky stuff. So, shout outs to them. Not our favorite of, of their beers, but I'm still holding on to uh, 120 minutes. So, just a good, 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 good beer. It's got some, some dankness to it. To be honest, I haven't been drinking much beer recently. Uh, beer recently. Been sick since August, not feeling well. Also, been on making cocktails instead. Oh, you moved over to the liquor world. Um. I'm still about the beer. Um, that's kind of what I've been doing on the show all this time, so I haven't moved out of it. Liquor gets me too drunk, too quick. Too so, lit. Yeah, so whether you're making like blood and sand or whether you're making like old fashions or like Cosmos or whatever it is that you're making, that shit will just get me tore up too quick, but I, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'll just stay with beer. It's easy. I can I can go. Okay, this beer is a five. This is a four point five. This is an eight. I can kind of judge my toxicity a little bit better. But with liquor, you know, people will be like, "Oh, sure, a shot of." You know, they put like two and a half shots in it, so I can judge a little bit better with the beer. Anyways, back into it. We'll do the. Uh, we'll do this one. Prost. Prost. So what are some things that you're super excited for as far as like uh, nothing really exciting about work, right? Uh, no, nothing too exciting about work. Uh, just Thanksgiving, man. Just the, the You're chance. excited about the food? Well, yeah. I am. Like my family. I, I love my family. Um, I enjoy having everyone around. Our cousins are all like siblings, really. Yeah. So we, uh, we look forward to the few chances we have to all get together. No, I love that. Like, you, you only have so much time, and you really don't know how much time that is. So, you know, if you see a cousin, and you're like, okay, it's great to see you Thanksgiving, 
and then you know a year later they're you know fucking dead like as as sad as that is like you don't know how much time you have with somebody like that's why as lame as it sounds i see my grandma every friday like whenever the person is gone whoever you're taking advantage or not taking advantage you're taking for granted what time you have with them because you're assuming that you're going to just grow old and they'll just kind of always be there you'll be old and sitting down at some cafe laughing at some dumb shit together that's possible but in reality you don't know that's going to happen so i'm seeing people while i can because you don't know how much time you have with them and you'll just wish once they're gone that you just had like one more day with them yeah so I'm, you know, get it in, man. Thanksgiving's a great day for that. Like, not getting into the the politics or the ethics of Thanksgiving. Like, it's roots. When it comes down to it, it's, it's a reason for your family to get together and see each other. You know, it's family coming down that maybe you haven't seen in a whole year. Maybe they come down just for Christmas or just for Thanksgiving, and that's fucking awesome and I, I take advantage of that I read this title what is this news so the news Jake or the news sky is about uh, well so we've got a couple news so the first news is that next week I think it's next week yeah next week I will be in Nashville and we're gonna do an episode with Jake I'll have a number up so you guys can call up talk shit ask questions we'll have beer I'm going to be in Nashville for probably four or five days with Leah. Um, Leah, Me, Leah, and Jake. So the following week, if it works out well, I'll be with the Wild Herbs of Eolita. I'll be with Lauren, who is super awesome and very driven girl, and I'm going to be interviewing her. Um, following that, I've done, an, um, I've done all the calibrations in the – the checks on the internet and I've met with the people so I'll be doing some episodes at the Throne of Tisca locally so if you guys don't know that it's kind of like a local art history kind of area it's a very Albany kind of area so I'll be doing an episode probably in the planetarium so that'll be beautiful there'll be the planetarium I'll probably have multiple cameras up kind of showing you things I think it'll be great I'll probably get there four or five hours early before we go live just to kind of get set up and figure out exactly what I want to do. I'm going to do an episode on the Throne of Tisca's train, which is an 1800s train. So having an episode where I drink beer on a train, that just sounds amazing. So that's planned out. I'm going to do an episode with Mac eventually. And Mac is, um, he, he makes fly, he hand makes fly fishes. He goes on, or, or flies for fly fishing. He he goes on live every Thursday. I know Thursday for sure, but he probably goes on live other days as well. And there's just some other stuff in the mix that I'm, I'm super excited about. And if you guys haven't watched uh, Stella Fortuna's show, I do her show every Tuesday from about 9 o'clock to about 11, give or take. You know, sometimes we'll go online at like 9.20, 9.10. And she does uh, card reading. So even if you're not a believer or you're not really into it if you just have some questions or you just want to go in there for shits and giggles Stella for Stella Fortuna is her name and um, doing shows for her I'll be on tomorrow night setting up that show for her uh, if you're thinking your cheating ass girlfriend is doing something funky you can check into the show and ask questions and she'll read the cards and even if you don't believe it it's still interesting and it's still a super old tradition and it's just it's awesome that's not what she does for a living she's actually went to school for archaeology she's a, a very smart and very experienced person but she also happens to be interested in cards so she does this on the side either way I've, I've rambled a bit we're gonna go in this transcendo Transcendo from Three Taverns, and we're finalizing everything with an IPA with Citra Mosaic and Laurel hops. It says soft, smooth, and fresh squeezed. Transcendo, TR, it's double dry hopped, and ABV is 6%. If you guys have questions, like I said, the, uh, the number's down there, or the chat is over there. Talk some shit, call us up. 
if you already got a PS5 or you, you know, you have any of this stuff, whatever you want to talk about, man, run it. We're, we're just two dudes here drinking beer and talking. If you want to talk about anything, run it. I haven't heard you in a second, Sky, so I don't know if you caught that or I don't know if you've just been too busy playing your PlayStation to even catch it. I'm going to show you guys this, this here burr. So, I don't think I've said it. So, it's, it is Transcendo. Transcendo. And it is uh, Three Taverns, which that is a Georgia beer. And it's from uh, Decatur, Georgia. It says, canned and brewed by Three Taverns Craft Brewery in Decatur, Georgia. So, that is a local beer. So, shout out to Three Taverns. They're really good at making... Uh, Three Taverns has made some of my favorite favorite sours honestly they make amazing sours their ipas are good um but their sours are really really good transcendo hope you guys enjoyed that let's get into it. let's get a little smell let's get a good smell alicia that is a good smell prost Good. It's a classic IPA. It's not breaking the mold, but it's also not, um, like, honestly, it's not memorable. But these days, like, as much beer as I've had, it's hard to find a beer that really, like, fucking shakes me up. I just, I think this is just like a, like you said, it's just a classic, just classy IPA. Yeah, no, it's and good. And I, I think it's a good version of that. I think it's uh, just... Just a really good classic take on. No, it's good. So, so just because I say a beer is not memorable, does not throw any shade to the beer, honestly. So keep in mind that I've been doing the show for well over a year, and I have six new beer every episode, and that's not even factoring in beer that I have outside of the episode, beer that I want to try, beer that Pretoria comes out with. Um, I have a fuck ton of beer a shit ton of beer so it's very hard to find a beer style that it's something that's just super funky and great that i just never had so one of the ones i will say is i think orpheus made it and it's a sour that had like a naked lady on it and it was like super super good um el chupacabra was a sour with uh peppers in it and I think Sky actually brought that one into the mix that one was really good the blue popsicle um, and I don't remember the brewery that made it Sky actually brought that one as well they make really good beer uh, or that beer was really good so I, I less so remember the beer like exactly the beer and more so just get more love for the brewery that I get their beer from. So Dogfish Head gets a lot of a lot of love for me. Three Taverns gets a lot of love. New Realms has come a long way from what they originally were. And New Realms is actually putting out really good beer. Pretoria, you know, when we first came out, Walker Station Stout was the first beer that we had put out. Um, and then the Sholey, the Skywater, and the Flowing Well Goza comes out. They've come a long way with the beer that they put out. Like, those are solid beers. Those first four beers were super solid. The Walker Station is still one of my favorites. But that Farmhouse Berry Goza, super, super good. The, um, the Brown Thrasher, or now as it's called, the Be Happy Brown L, um, super, super good Brown Thrasher. The Red Feather, super good. Um, I really like that Juice Box Hero. Um, the S'more Stout's a bit sweet for me, but... You get what I'm saying, like as a brewery starts up, as they're really new, um, they'll put out, maybe their first couple beers are not super earth shaking, you know, they're not mold breaking, but in time, they kind of get new people in the mix or they kind of work out their kinks and they make really good beers. So to reiterate, <laughs> there's not single beers that are groundbreaking, but breweries in themselves that step it up, that I, I enjoy their their beer a lot more. They go to the next level and then just take that leap yeah. from your standard to your exploratory. 
Like Ology makes great beer. Ology in, in Tallahassee, they make great beer. Um, the Mad Fermentist out in, in Vegas, uh, they're a very, very small brewery. And funny story is the guy, the owner of that, or one of the co-owners, he was in the East for some reason. He was in Georgia and Florida and all that. And he happened to come into Pretoria, one of the owners, and he was just kind of like, hey, if you're ever in Vegas, come see me. And I said, bet. So I went to Vegas and I showed up and he's like, dude, I never fucking thought you were gonna be here. And I showed up at, at uh, the Mad Fermentist Brewery in Vegas and they hooked me up. You know, he took me into a couple of restaurants. He, I tried a lot of beer. I took home shirts and glasses and like, those guys are knocking out good beer. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that, but either way, <laughs> we're gonna get back into the beer. You've obviously seen that the beer is having somewhat effect on my on, on where my conversation is going, and that's okay. It says, I have another milk stout I got yesterday. I forgot the name of the brewery, but it's real nice. It has coconut in it. I've had some, um, some stouts that have coconut in it. There's one called Death by Coconut, which I, I don't know the brewery. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but it was actually really good. You think, like, adding coconut to a stout, but then when you try it, you're like, I get it. That's my initial reaction. I'm like, ugh, I just don't know. I get it. No, I get it. I didn't think I would at first. I actually had, that was an episode um, with, what's the guy's name? TJ Barlow. You know TJ? He's a, uh, does like parathleticism. He does jujitsu with uh, one leg. I, I've, I know of him. I haven't. Super cool guy. Very um, inspiring, you know, like doing jujitsu and like just being very driven, even though he's got one leg. Uh, super nice guy very skilled but we had death by coconut on there and that even wasn't a style that he was even interested in and we, afterwards we were both like we've tried it and we're like we're like that shit good he was like that shit real good <laughs> like it was just it was super good and we we're both super surprised because we didn't expect much out of it we went into it with a uh just a minuscule amount of bias and it still came out really really good which that goes a long way for their their beer, that Death by Coconut. If you guys, uh, a lot of you um, Sally's and Mary's and Karen's out there, if you like those Starbucks iced coffees, try the PBR coffee uh, alcoholic drink. What is it called? The, was it, was it? It's, it's. I have a picture of it. It's a Starbucks it basically tastes like those little glass Starbucks iced coffees. And the can even looks like it. It's, yeah, so it's PBR hard coffee. And it's what, 5%? 5%. Okay. So it's 5%. And even in the can, it looks like a, one of those Starbucks like kind of energy drinks you drink. But it's alcoholic and it's 5%. And it is, I'm not trying to sound like a, a Steve or like a Tom right now. Like, Oh, that's so dangerous. That's so dangerous, you know, but it's fucking dangerous. Like, it tastes just like one of those. Like, it's hard to taste the alcohol in it. So, if you guys like those iced coffees, you could probably ride down the road with one of those in your hand and nobody would ever know anything about it. Like, I don't, I don't um, advertise or promote drunk driving. I don't at all. But... If you had one in your hand or in your car, I don't think a cop would ever see what it was. It says, uh, I want to like stout so bad, but every time I buy them, I just can't get behind it. I'll take them off your hands. Same, Alicia. It says, uh, the flavors always sound nice, and I know they're good for the winter, but it just ain't for me. How many, how many stouts would you say you've had, Skye? In all of your beer drinking, how many stouts have you had? I think that you've been going to Ology and you've been getting these like double imperial bourbon barrel kind of bullshit. Like these things are good, but you're buying basically like, I'm going to put this on a nerd basis. Technically what you want is like a, a Super Saiyan 1 and what you've been getting is like a Super Saiyan 4 or Super Saiyan Blue. Like you've been, you've been wanting this down here. You're like, this is what most people like is a basic stout, but you've been getting like the super version of each of them. So you assume that that is what they all are. 
probably like seven. Yeah, I think you've been doing the Imperial, the bourbon barrel stouts, the double stouts. Like just get a basic, super nice milk stout, coffee stout, oatmeal stout, one of those. They're really nice. Sit outside near the campfire, you'd be good to go. Actually, Pretoria Fields makes a really good stout. They're a Walker Station stout. It's not super heavy. It's not super creamy like a lot of stouts are. Creamy in, like, in a bad way that some people associate. It's not super thick like a Guinness would be. It's not nitro. Uh, it's really easy to drink. The coffee comes out really good. The, the chocolate comes out really well. I've had stouts from other breweries as well. Don't judge based on Guinness either. Well, I like Guinness, but only in Ireland. Um, but I think you've been trying these like 8 9% stouts. Just get you a good classic 5% milk stout, something super classy, basic, and you'll be all right. You've been drinking these ology ones. I hate imperial stouts. That 9% is for the birds. No, I agree with that. Some of these breweries, they try to like, we're going to do a, a double imperial bourbon barrel stout. And I'm like, okay. And when you taste it, it tastes like bourbon. It tastes like straight bourbon, yeah. except for it's only like 9%. And you're like, why would I drink a 9% bourbon? Like, why wouldn't I just get regular bourbon? They let it sit so long in these bourbon barrels that it, it soaks up so much of that smoked flavor that you're basically tasting a bourbon but at nine percent like what's the point i want the bourbon to be like super on the back end that i drink it Some and i'm like little yeah little i want to drink it and be like hmm. i'd be like where's the bourbon here it is it's, it's right in the back that's why i want my bourbon i want my bourbon in the back seat i don't want my right. bourbon fucking driving i want my bourbon in the back seat it says, I got you some from Proof. It has coffee stout. They made it with coffee from Grassroots and uh, and Teaville. Teaville? There's Tallahassee and there's... Okay. All right. Teaville. Teaville. Never heard it called that. So. No, me, me neither. It's a ville. Teaville. <laughs> to each your own. Yeah, no, I'll definitely buy it off your hands, and I'll have it on episode. If it's from Proof, I probably like it. Sometimes Proof, though, they'll make, dude, they'll make some stouts that are like motor oil. They're so, like, they'll be like 13, 14%, something stupid like that, and they're like super imperial bourbon barrel stouts or whiskey barrels, and like, they just go too far in it. Like, you pour it, and it's just jet black, and you taste it, and it tastes like straight... Thomasville, T-Ville. Okay, makes sense. That's better. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. I was thinking... Tallahassee. I was thinking of Tallahassee or Thomasville, Georgia. But, um... Yeah, no, I like a good, classic, simple stout. So, hopefully soon... Pretoria... So, Pretoria is doing the Stout Sunday. So, every other Sunday, they're putting out a new stout... And they've got the coffee stout right now, which is the campsite coffee stout. Super good, really easy to drink, 6.5%. If you want me to make you a crowler of it, I can. Or make you a, I got these little 32 ounce growlers, which is the same as a crowler. I can make you that as well if you're interested. Um, I know they've got, hopefully, my black garlic stout, which I'll make. I'll probably get them to bottle up a couple of those and put them off to the side. Hopefully, in time, as they sit there for a year, the black garlic becomes more pronounced. So, hopefully. I, I put, like, a huge gallon-sized Ziploc bag of black garlic, so... Anyways, uh, let's plow through. It's 1219. We'll plow through this beer, and then we'll uh, kind of rate the beer where we think they, they stand, so from best to worst. And, and soon I'm thinking about creating, so as you see with this, this kind of beer thing, I'm thinking about creating like a rating system. So I'll put left to right and you'll see how we rate the beer at the very beginning and at the very end, I'm thinking. We'll put the beer based on like the, la the label and the logo and the description, like, Oh, this is a session I L 
Session IPA with Amarillo and Mosaic. I don't think I'm going to like this. And I'll put this at the very end, and then we'll compare where it was at the beginning and where it was at the end. So if you guys are interested in that, let me know. But let's – well, you've already pound down yours, okay? Yeah, the crush mine. You crushed it. And that was the uh, Transcendo from Three Taverns. All right, we're going to get all the cans up here. All the bottles, all the cans. I probably should have eaten a little bit more today. I'm kind of goofy. Yeah, me too. All right, so here I can probably stretch this out a bit to where we can put how we feel about them. So we'll put our first to last. So, um, I don't even know if we can fit all of those beer on there. All right, put the, the one you like the best on the far left. And that's, that's counting the two new Trattoria beers as well. so excited for the episode with Jake can't wait to hear the dude ramble yeah no I love Jake's randomness Jake will just say hey next week we got on Mick Jagger he's going to talk about uh, sodomy and hard liquor you know and there's I mean obviously not he's not going to be on the show but Jake just says random shit which I think is amazing So you like Transcendo first, correct? That's your yeah. favorite? The, the one we just drank. Wait. Where's this one working for the mix? We got very, a lot of very even. Yeah? All right, so. So for you, uh, first place would be the, the IPA. Was there anything that was super impressive for you? Anything that was really, really good? No, it was just, it was a good classic. Just, it was, it was awesome. It was just great flavor. Nothing like was, the, nothing was like super memorable though. Nothing was like really mold breaking. No, I just, I just know that I could drink that literally all day. What do you think about the, uh, the hazy? So is, is the hazy the third place? Hazy there? is the third place for me. So that's our hazy is our third place. You got to watch them. Hazy is right here. Uh, right here. That's the, uh, the Jukebox Hero, which is the Hazy from Pretoria, which is our number three. Um, we got our Transcendo is number two. The, uh, is it D4? Is that what they listed it as? Yeah. It's a three day, three day IPA from Three Taverns. So we got two Three Taverns beers as the number one. Uh, we have Pretoria's Hazy Jukebox Hero as number three. Sunset, Parad Sunset Passion as number four. The Brown Thrasher, right. the, the Be Happy Brown Ale, the new improved Brown Ale from Pretoria is number five. The Stout is number six. You didn't like the coffee stout? It just it ended up being overbearing a little bit. Okay, the coffee was a little too much on there? Yeah, for me. Okay, for and then the Dogfish Head. Um, the what's it called? Imperial Cream or the... Imperial Cream Ale, uh, something karaoke. Yeah, Imperial Cream Ale with turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, and star meat. It's called what? Cosmic and karaoke? What's it called? The name of it? Costumes and karaoke. Costumes and karaoke. So that's that's last place from you from Dogfish Head. So you guys see uh, here's our rating. So first place three three day IPA. Um, second place Transcendo from Three Taverns as well. The Hazy IPA. So Juice Box Hero is number three. Sunset Passion from New Realms. The uh, be Happy Brown Thrasher, Brown Ale from Pretoria, and the uh, Campfire Coffee Stout from Pretoria is number six, and the 
Costumes and karaoke is number seven from Dogfish Head. So we're gonna go back to the main camera. Right on, that's how we, uh, that's how we rate it all, guys. Those are our favorites. That's what we dig in tonight. I don't know if it's the weather, I don't know if it's the food or lack thereof, but that's kind of how we've rated them all tonight. Um, yeah, no, I've had a great episode so far. We've talked about a lot of stuff. I wish I would have had more calls, but shout out to Taco for calling us all the way from uh, outside of Pittsburgh. So Appreciate it, man. That was nice. He went to sleep, but, you know, we still, you're in our heart. Full heart shout out, or as Jake likes to do, this little... <laughs> This little thing it's supposed to be like a japanese heart but whatever <laughs> it's jake who knows all, all right guys bit. uh we're getting ready to call it a night i've had a good time um i always used to ask people these questions but as i when when COVID happened i couldn't ask i didn't have people to interview as much as i would like you know because i was interviewing like blacksmiths and bow builders and falconeers and this stream was supposed to be kind of like a way for me to get skills and experience to build the app that I want to build in the future and I still want to build. One of my questions is, is that if you could learn any skill, any skill was available to you, all are available to you, what would you want to learn? Well, something you always want to learn. Everything from like sailing to scuba diving to Russian to box weaving or crocheting, tattooing, whatever, piano. Russian. What, what's something you've always wanted to learn? I would like to learn the violin. I think it would just be something fun. Yeah? Um, I something played, you've always wanted to learn? Yeah, like I've played you know, various instruments over my life, and I just uh, I feel like that would be something unique. And The violin or the fiddle? I'd say violin. So you want to learn more classical, like Vivaldi, Paganini style? Absolutely. Okay. I wasn't sure if you wanted to do some, like, chicken picking, like, don't know, don't know. No, I mean, I appreciate that music, but I think personally, if I were to play it, I'd want more of a, a classical training, classical background, and just just explore from there. That or to fly planes. Yeah, no. I I looked into it at one point, like trying to learn to get my pilot's license, because I got, I got my scuba, scuba diving certification, something I always wanted to get. I figured if I was traveling, then, you know, if I'm in Vietnam, right? I can see Vietnam, but there's a whole other side of Vietnam. It's scuba diving, it's coast, and all that kind of stuff that I w would be missing out on without a certification. So I got my certification, and I looked into being a pilot, and it's just so fucking expensive. Now, if you're looking into it over the next 10 years, you can work it out. You know, you can budget it, you can work it out. You're basically just... As scuba diving is, you have to get a certain amount. So compare, anybody who knows scuba diving, compare becoming a dive master versus just getting your pilot's license. So you have to have a certain amount of time in the air. You have to have all the training. You got to like pay people to take you up, you know. And at the very end, I think you have to fly from point A to point B um, and then back. And it's... It's a bit much, but once you get your pilot's license, you're good to go. What you'll do with it, I don't know, because if you don't have a plane, and you know Delta or something's not going to hire you for that. You're like, hey, cool, I'm. I got my pilot's license. And they're like, okay, cool. What have you flown? And they're like, I just flown these little puddle jumpers. And they're like, get no, out of here. No. No, I have a family member that used to be a stunt pilot, and uh, stunt pilot. He would uh, he would take me up with him, and I would go. Um, you know, go up to the air and stall, and then and do a backflip, and then back. the, yeah, yeah. That Sky kind says, of stuff. Um, "I'm learning the skill of making cocktails. Once this quarantine ends, it's never going to end. Never. I'm going to get my friends drunk as fuck with all the drinks I've learned. It started because I got to do something with all these lemons in the backyard, and now I'm just learning stuff. So Sky lives in Tallahassee, and Sky's backyard is like Animal Crossing. He's got just his whole, every tree in his backyard is fruit. Like, he didn't plant it. Whoever was there before, before them, planted fruit trees. So he's got like these large limoncello kind of lemons. He's got like little Japanese lemons. He's got just crazy amounts of fruit, which I think is awesome. And he can do a lot with it. Uh, you should get into microbrewing. Like, get something set up in one of your little rooms. 
micro brew, use some of that fruit and make some real funky sours. You have all of the stuff to make it. You can make some real funky sours. I don't know what you would call it. You would call it, I don't know, Sky Micro Brew, or you would call it like, uh, I don't know what you would call it. But honestly, you've got the stuff to make all kinds of crazy sours. And I think the world needs more sours. Anyways, um, violin would be awesome. That's something I've always been interested in. Um, so if anybody doesn't know, if you haven't watched the show long enough, I, I wanted to create an app. Me and Jake are working on an app. We've got like notebooks full of information and we want an app to where you can look locally. It'll use like an algorithm similar to Facebook or similar to um, Tinder or Bumble or all those. You can look within 30 miles, 5 miles, 100 miles and find somebody with the skills that you want to learn and you barter with no money involved to learn your skills. So whatever you have to offer, whether it's a skill or an asset, whether it's like, hey, I've got a truck, I'll, or I can cook, or I'll mow your lawn, or I'll cook for you, whatever, or six pack of beer, doesn't matter. Or I'll teach you TIG welding. And you basically just barter skill for skill to with no money involved and you're basically building a connection with another person you're learning hands-on a skill um, and it, nothing like that exists on the market and if you're watching the show now and you try to steal it I'll fuck you up we've already got stuff do it. we already got st stuff in notebooks dated timed marked and I can check to see who's actually watching the show because I'll fuck you up fuck um, with them if you want to yeah, I'll beat your ass and your little kid's ass too. Um, <laughs> but no, so I think it's awesome that if, let's say, I use this for an example all the time. Let's say I, Yarobi is a language, right? It's a, uh, the language of Nigeria. There's a girl in our kitchen at Pretoria at one point who she spoke Yarobi, but she's like making salads and shit. She speaks a language that she's probably the only one in Albany who speaks Yarobi. That's a valuable kind of asset. It's, she has a valuable skill set. She speaks a language that nobody else in Albany speaks, Yarobi, and it's underutilized. So if she can use her, Yarobi, and there's plenty of people in town, I'm sure, who want to learn the language from Nigeria, that she can use that to barter to learn uh, TIG welding, or she can learn like some other kind of skill that weaving she, or whatever she wants to learn or... she can learn anything there's just tons of different skilled people who are kind of under the radar who she she can barter her her yarobi language and learn her another skill that'll make her more valuable in the workforce not only that but she'll make connections with another skilled person and you're just building a relationship so if let's say i use this while i'm traveling and i'm like hey i know basic I'm a journeyman electrician. I can do basic electrical work. And I'm in Thailand, and I'm like, hey, I will fix anything in your, in your dojo, in your whatever, and just give me like three lessons of Thai kickboxing. And you can kind of barter, and you're making friendships, you're making relationships with people. And uh, some, like I said, something like that doesn't exist, and I think it should exist. So me and Jake are in the process of uh, working on that app. And we created actually trade skills to kind of be the prerequisite or the, the foundation of it. So as I'm meeting cooler people, the beer kind of worked in, uh, it wasn't supposed to be the main front, but it kind of did work its way a little further up, more so than we wanted. Originally it was supposed to be us just kind of interviewing people and we needed a lubricant for conversation. So some people would be a little, they're not used to being in front of lights or cameras or seeing themselves. So they, they weren't really about it or they would be a little withheld or a little uh, cautious or shy. And you get a couple of beers in them and they kind of loosen up. And that's kind of how the show's kind of evolved over the year. Year, I say year, single year. We're probably like a year and three months into it. but. It's been a nice little journey, and it's hopefully not going to end anytime soon. 
Um, either way, I've kind of ventured off a of conversation. Like I say, next week, um, if I have my dates right, we should be in Nashville. So it's going to be a super awesome time. Um, I'm going to be hanging out with Jake. It's going to be a great episode. Cool beer. Um, Leah should be there. If she's not, then she ain't shit. But I wouldn't be surprised. Um, the episode following that, I don't know if I'm going to be on a train or if I'm going to be in a planetarium. But either way, it's going to be a cool, cool location. Shout out to Todd hooking us up. Super cool guy. Um, I think I'm getting ready to end the episode. We're about uh, 30 minutes longer than what we normally run. Not that we're on a time crunch and that we have to abide by a two-hour time slot. We but can do what the hell we want. We can. But, I, I mean, I've had a fun time. I've had a fun time. We've drank some good beer <laughs> and some uh, mediocre beer. It's been a cool night. Thank you, guys. Shout out to Taco. Thank you for calling in. And like Appreciate I say. It, man. I want, I want you guys to be able to call in any time. I want this to be a normal thing. So if you guys want to call in and talk some shit, I think that should be a thing. And don't think that it's too late. If you want to call in now and talk some shit, we can make it work. Chances are you probably won't because you ain't shit. So <laughs> either way, it's been a great episode, man. I'm getting ready to sign it off. Thank you guys for tuning in. Like I say, this is uh, every Monday night from about... 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time to about midnight. Uh, we're going to be drinking beer and usually talking to some cool people. So thank you again. Thanks again. Sorry, it's a beer. It's been a cool time, man. Thanks again for popping in kind of last last minute. Um, I was so much trying to get, like, meet with these people and trying to get internet and get all the stuff checked and get locations checked that I was like, I haven't at all planned for Monday I was like, I wonder if Ryan wants to come on and drink some beer with me. Let's 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 check that out. And he was like, Hell yeah! And I was like, My man, <laughs> hell yeah. So uh, either way, guys, it's been a cool time. I'll see you guys next week. And uh, if you want to chime in early, if you like what I do, check out Stella Fortuna on uh, Twitch. She's gonna be on every Tuesday night from about nine ish to until. So if she gets a lot of readings. She'll stay it for a while, so no telling. But it's been a great time. Thanks, Sky. Thanks, Alicia. Short Buzz Taco. You guys have been great. Ciao. I'll see you.